<clears throat> okay, so Seth kind of has about an aura of uh, charisma with him. He cares about his common man and he wants justice uh, to be met out in the world. Um, he kind of roots for the underdog. Uh, he's young, somewhat brash, but uh, he has kind eyes. Um, kind blue eyes. He's got brown hair. He has a uh, long sword that he has at his side. Um, and he speaks with people with authority, but uh, mostly patience, right? Uh, I mean... Yeah, I feel pretty good with that. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so sure. So Berwick uh, Gravel Toes is, uh, I'd say, a middle-aged, stocky dwarf um, who uh, always finds himself in the heat of battle. He has, uh, despite trying otherwise, he has a really bad temper. Um, he sees himself as kind of a mentor to Seth, um, although the relationship always doesn't always work out that way. Um, uh, he doesn't have as much of a level head as Seth, so he's trying to be a mentor, but he kind of, his temperament gets the better of him. That's it. <laughs> All right. So, my man Copperhead, he's uh he's a bit of a scoundrel. He actually recently came to knock uh from from another area. He doesn't really talk about that, but he wasn't a gang. Uh, I think they were called the Red Red Daggers. And one thing you would notice about uh, Copperhead is he fights with daggers. Uh, like I said, he is a kind of a, a shady character. He has red flowing hair. It's long, and you might actually think he was kind of attractive, except for the fact that he has scars all over his face from past battles. So... Um, other than that, he seems like a young man uh, who just knows what to do on the street. <clears throat> yes, my name is Melorio. Young, being a shade artist, there were many that were concerned that I might myself gravitate towards the practices of death. Uh, but I have striven to find the balance between life and death and seek out twilight. I am a stoic and soft spoken individual, uh, only when I am very. Um, opinionated about the subject will I might raise my I am I have worked with Seth before uh see him as a good individual uh, oops soft spoken individual that I am <laughs> I have worked with Seth on a few occasions before and look forward to joining him as we see to end this death in this and bring them <sighs> yes I will Denki is a uh, fairly standard light foot halfling. Um, he has a history working as an investigator in the city. Uh, he actually comes from a long line of investigators. It's like a family practice. So um, he is also a pretty adept wizard, specifically in abjuration magic. Uh, he's very... Uh, determined especially to like find the truth and is very he's he's known as a relatively honest uh, individual
Copperhead, you keep your ear to the ground. Perhaps you would know of uh, maybe someone that might sell information about uh, the moose. Yeah, man, I do know a lot. I'll I'll keep my uh, I'll keep my friends in mind, and maybe I can ask them and you know, get some information. We'll see. I'm also thinking it might be good to look around for for clues or maybe look for some clues of arcana i have dabbled in that a little bit i know what to look for don't worry yourself with that i think green bottle here our arcanist might be better pressed in those uh those ventures i i i, I trust you uh mostly with uh, ledger domain and, and, and knowing who to know uh, in this city is that right ha 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 I see that was your first mistake. Probably shouldn't trust me with anything. You know, I love it. Unless you're, of course, you're a good friend. And I wink at you. Nice. <laughs> Just smile kindly. <laughs> so, folks, what's it going to be? What do you want to do? Isn't there a tavern you say you love in this district? Where all, you know, the who's who's at? Are we, we in the still district? Are we in the still district? Yeah, Copperhead wouldn't stop talking about. It. Uh, I mean, uh, it's it's pretty obvious, Seth. <laughs> go to the still district and knock some heads together. Come on, <laughs> just does. go it. Not, we're not there yet, man. But I mean, it's obvious, you know. <laughs> oh. Yeah, man, I like the way he thinks, but it's a little bit too obvious. We've got to be a little more subtle. Uh, Big toes, not it's gravel toes, and that is not not my way. You need toes to look pretty big to me. Big toes. Your toes are pretty <laughs> big to me. You don't want to. Uh, you don't want to see how they smell. They smell pretty good too. Oh. 
what are you gonna do? Cut up my face? It's already cut up pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, whatever you guys want to do. What have been the signs that the death cult has been present in the city? Perhaps that might give us a lead into where to look. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> of a cant of sorts. If only if one of us. Religious a... signs that I might be able to <laughs> interpret being a follower of the same goddess. All right. Yes. To recognize religious iconography, I believe religion would be most appropriate. I rolled a 14. What do they look like? I see uh, <clears throat> potential symbols of the death cult, the upside down moon starless in its depiction. Copperhead has led me to believe that these are definitely not thieves can't. So the only other option I would say would be that it is signs of this death cult and their thought going on in the city. Yeah, I think you're going somewhere with this. Uh, I think what I'd like to do is maybe jump bandwagon on that uh, idea and, you know, maybe use a little either perception or investigation to maybe try to see if I can find, uh, you know, where it's pointing us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'm thinking I'd like to do investigation. So going to be investigate. Yeah, no, it kind of screws over the wizard, but I'm going to do it anyways. It's one of my best ones. So, hey, yeah. kind of screws this guy over, but you know, yeah, fuck, man. right? Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, do it anyway. I mean, I mean, if you're a friend, Yo -yo. all right, I'm going to roll investigation a one, probably. No, you 17 for great. the people at home.
Could you ping it? Um, if I hear them discussing this, um, I have a solid history of the city just from generations of having lived here. Can I try and make like a sort of history check to know if there are any areas in those two districts that would be a place they might gather just to kind of narrow it down to maybe, you know, a two or three locations even? So, I Hundred percent. So, like the dotted lines are paved, basically. Ah, cool. I'd like to try and rent maybe a ferry or uh, maybe a boat to, you know, perhaps explore the canals. Maybe find more of these markings. Do you guys think that might be a good idea? Yeah. Yeah, like maybe with some of the ferrymen, and I'll show them. Uh, Green bottle, do you have a prestidigitation? Perhaps you are the abjuration sort. Perhaps you could show this ferryman here a symbol we've been looking for. We can hear a little bit of talk in the background. No, I can hear you. No, I mean on the, the the stream. Oh, on the stream. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Don't worry. He hasn't said anything of much importance. Test fixing now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's been thirty minutes, and that's why no, that's why people left. Probably there were people watching. I was like, wow. We actually gained one. There were three. Now there's four. Yeah, that's fine. Well, okay. I, I'm I'm now audible now, and uh, yeah, this session. Oh man.
man, that sucks. I need. Well, we could hear you at least. Yeah, that's fine. At least we've got that part. I mean, it's more for other people, so this isn't going to be yeah, something we want to yeah. share. Uh, I was planning on putting this as like a, hey, watch this video if you're interested in playing in my game, and then it would have been great, but I ruined it, so it's You just fine. have to cut the beginning off. Yeah, just, just and this whole part that I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, we'll just start right now. I'm so yeah, bad right at... Now. Yeah, we'll start over. Um, this is a true rendition. All of your success... This is a true rendition of what you're going to expect <laughs> when you play in a John <laughs> Prey game. Absolute right. folly. But oh, my God. It's, it's honest. It's genuine. It's well, you could just catch us up. You could say, so in the past few minutes, the characters did this, yeah, and here we go. Yeah, yeah. So real, yeah, quick, do that. real quick synopsis. The group is investigating the city of Nock. You probably saw some pictures and heard me talking and then heard the players talking more about it because I was quiet during those parts, which was smart on my part. Um, <laughs> so you have an understanding of who these characters are. Um, no thanks to me. And then they're investigating inside of the Steel District looking for a death cult. Uh, because the death cults are bad, obviously. Um, and uh, they've done some investigatory work. Um, thank you for laughing at that. That was a, um, a pretty good joke on my part, I guess. Um, but um, they're searching. And I'm glad I haven't said too much, except for that whole big blurb that was missed at the beginning. I'm going to stop talking now, go back to the investigatory part. Now, Dan, I was coordinating with you. Um, you were interested experiment about renting a, a boat uh, so we could you know travel the canals right and so what i was asking there is is are you trying to get the canals to kind of get a better vantage point for what you're seeking and like get an eye and kind of look around are you trying to utilize the canal boats as kind of like a better means of kind of investigating like uh, what, what's your goal here I think from what i have the, the party has kind of um, gathered so far what i lead or what i believe is that perhaps um, the canals which lead to these uh, networks, these underground networks, uh, most likely serve as the hideout for the cultists. So by, you know, immersing ourselves in, 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 in these canals, uh, it'd be more of an uh, advantageous position to see, perhaps, um, where they may so travel. I guess the question I'm asking is, I understand what you're going for now. What... I'm going to talk to the ferryman and just kind of try to gather information. Okay. From very different from what you had initially said so you're trying to kind of get some information out of the ferryman get some yeah. idea if they've seen anything uh, awkward okay but so, I also, on top of that i want to start exploring the canals so sure 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 it's wrong. twofold but we're, we're still focusing towards one skill we're moving towards that yeah. and it sounds yeah. like the talking to the ferryman is more what you're keen on yeah. right so what skill do you think that would be uh persuasion perfect so then go ahead and make a persuasion check You're talking to the ferryman that you kind of rent a boat on. Um, now the ferry, uh, these ferries, these these boats on the canals, actually canal boats, are kind of more long and slender than they are kind of like you know regular boats. Um, you probably have like maybe you know clearance of a foot on either shoulder, so it's literally just like a long five foot square, um, probably about fifteen to twenty feet long, the boat that you're on. Um, and as you're kind of you know. Uh, talking with this individual, he uh, says, "Oh yeah, I've seen some, sh I've seen some really strange stuff uh, over over by the um, uh, the uh, uh, the Crystallis Tavern and Inn. Um, some really strange stuff around those parts, especially around the market there. Um, I, I would say maybe check that out. So the Crystallis Tavern and Inn, you would know, would be at kind of the end point of the Middle Canal uh, in these districts." Now, he said specifically it's kind of like the market around there. And um, as you kind of approach that location and kind of debark the uh, canal boat um, towards the market, you would see that the Crystallis is on one side of the canal, kind of on the north side of the canal. And the market is on the south side of the canal. Um, and I'll let you know, uh, with your skill challenge, you're currently one success away um, from completing the skill challenge so well done on your part it's very good rolls for everybody um but i have andy left <laughs> we're gonna fucking break our way in you can do it so you, you're in the market you've heard that there's some weird things weird activity going on around here it sounded like your original plan was knock some heads around to find some stuff out oh yeah is that still the plan Yep. 
All right. So as as I set, look at, I look at Berwick. Good cop, bad cop. Uh, I don't know what that means, Seth. Let's just go <laughs> make some heads. <laughs> I don't know anything about your fancy techniques. <laughs> yeah. your, your psychology. I'm pretty sure it's just cop. <laughs> ah! It's not funny. Nice. It's terrible. <laughs> Disagree. Uh, anyway. Uh, it is uh, it's too, too soon. Too real. Um, so that said... Um, you go in. Um, what's the skill that you're planning on utilizing here? I mean, strength. Well, it's not a... A a athletics. Okay, so you're physically wanting to kind of like muscle people around. <laughs> um, yep. Uh, what I will allow is you can go ahead and make an intimidate skill check. If you're not trained in intimidate, I uh, I am. You can make that intimidate check with your strength modifier. So if you're training athletics, go ahead and just make an athletics check. That will be an intimidation check. I understand. Uh, no. All right. I rolled a nine. Um, You can definitely tell everyone else that he is causing a scene and definitely drawing attention to himself. He's huffing him. He's, he's breathing. <sighs> you are too close to that, Mike. <laughs> yeah. I out for anybody that might be like... Sorry. Obviously yes, trying to I would like to as well. So it sounds like we have uh, a lot of people here uh, focused on that. So um, I will say. Um, I okay. So yeah, okay, great, uh, Tim. Um, you're trying to see if the kerfuffle that Berwick is kind of making here um, is causing. I'm try and grab Berwick. I know he's here. He's here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Berwick, you've had too much. I would like to take note of the emotional states of those around to see if any are perturbed by what is going on and concerned at the disturbance. Makes sense. Using insight. Okay. Go ahead and make an insight check. 19 was rolled. So you see a couple of people kind of move into what appears to be kind of like a, a small tent. Um, if you've ever been to a Ren Fair, just think of like, you know, one of those kind of tents that sells random miscellaneous um, staffs with 20-sided dice at the top of them to uh, drunken people for $25. <laughs> Not that this ever happened to me before. Uh -huh. <laughs> but you um, do see that they are going into the tent, um, and it definitely does look suspicious. When you kind of move around to see if you can see into the tent, um, you see, per the description that you were given, an individual named Ian. Oh, the reason why you awesome. know him is by his beard, by his hat. He's wearing a green Liberty cap with yellow kind of um, uh, lining. Um, and uh, yeah, um, is anyone close to Malurial or Malurial? Do you want to yeah, take action? Yeah. Did you get to the rest um, of the group that, Tim? Uh, I would kind of like lift a finger to signal to come. And with my uh, cloak of, what is it? Cloak of many fashions would kind of make it look kind of ragged and kind of like a poor person might have and flip it over my head and slowly approach in a hobbled manner the okay. uh, I, yeah. the, the tent. I like that. Um, I will say, so for narrative beats, real quick, a couple of points. Let's just make sure. We're, we're now kind of moving to like a scene here. So, uh, Tim, um, go ahead and just throw me a um, stealth check. Now, it's not going to be a very high DC. It's a really You'll have advantage for it because of what you're doing here. Um, and it's not going to be a very high DC. It's just something I feel, because I said he was looking at you, it might be kind of important. Um, yeah. Depending on how bad you roll. Secondly, you made a gesture. Um, for those at home, he rolled uh, double nines. Uh, that's not on the dice. That's the results. So not great. Uh, but you made a gesture. I will say that uh, based on what Dan had said, Dan is going to kind of get a hold of Berwick, and Berwick is still going the gusto, like, on that kind of pathway. I would say that Copperhead and Venki are able to react to the gesture that Malurio made, not the other Yeah. Thing. So you would see that um, she throws up a gesture, uses her coat, uh, cloak to make it look like, because normally it's really nice looking, uh, she makes it look yeah. like she's a popper. All right. All right, I guess I'll go first since I'm talking. What I would like to do, Copperhead, he sees the the, the thing that, uh, the little signal that uh, 
I gotta look up your name. Melario uh, gives him, and he. Uh, I'd like to use some uh, acrobatics to kind of get in there quickly, you know, kind of get around people, but you know, but do it like in a manner where I'm not gonna piss everybody off, you know, kind of like you know, okay, slide not, right around. Not, Are we out of the skill? Yeah, challenge? we're out of the skill challenge. You've succeeded. All right. Um, but I will say that um, you kind of move nimbly through very quickly. Um, and what you see in kind of response to um, Malurial's activities, you know, looking suspicious, changing coats all of a sudden, making gestures, is that the two that, uh, ones that kind of came out are kind of moving towards her. It doesn't look like they're doing so violently. It looks like they're more kind of trying to run uh, kind of screen. Um, and you, because they're now screening her, um, Copperhead, you're kind of coming in from the side, right? you would see that uh, Ian is already out of the tent and booking it towards the canal. And uh, Ben good. from a little bit further back, but still kind of appraising the situation, you would also be able to see this. So if you want to perform any you know, actions or if you want to just say what you're doing, we can go ahead and... Go ahead and... Mind spike. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead and throw it. On Berwick, I would say that I would say that they're in range. It's what <laughs> mine has already been spiked. <laughs> 120, 120 foot range, right? What did he spike it with? War of an ale. Yeah, sixty foot range. Um, yeah, you could probably get the, move up and do it. So you kind of like get chase for a, 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 just a moment with your twenty five foot me move, and then, um, okay, um, all right. So what I will note um, is uh, being kind of. Uh, very focused on the action. Um, when it comes to certain damage types, I do allow for you to decide, and something for food for thought for everyone, I do allow for you to decide whether or not you are implementing a killing blow or a non-lethal blow. You can kind of hit to force unconscious. One of the damage types that I allow for that is psychic. So do you wish to kill him or just knock him down. My purpose was to just knock him down, okay. make him unconscious, if anything. As you kind of force the hands and throw the spell, um, you see the sliver of kind of purple energy dart into his head, and you watch him just kind of drop, falls Ooh. to the ground. Didn't, nice shot. Didn't make it five or ten feet out of the tent. So uh, the two guys uh, screening don't seem to notice, um, but uh, Berwick and. Um, uh, Berwick and Seth would notice not too far from that. Notice um, Ian Berwick. falling to the ground? Notice Ian, and then notice the purple sliver appear in the air, slam him in the head and drop him. Got Good it. job, Berwick. Berwick would say to Seth, uh, yeah, yeah, you see what I did there? <laughs> you flushed him out. You flushed him out. You gotta put that in your book. I got it. Put that in your book. Um... But yeah, you you walk over. Like a... Camera pans these Venki just. Do you, do you want to carry him, Bearware? It was your flush. What's that? You want to carry him? It was, you obviously flushed him. Oh, out. you it's honor just, me, you know, Seth. You, yeah, <laughs> you honor me, Seth. Not getting the joke. He, he's a scrawnier fellow, um, and uh, is easy enough to kind of hoist up, pick up, and move. Um, looking around, there are a couple of alleyways nearby, um, easy enough to kind of push him into. So, uh, but Seth, there's one problem. I have these spikes all over my armor. <laughs> if I pick him right. up, he'll be all right. he'll, oh, are you sure? I, I, I hoist him up on the spikes. Oh. <laughs> it. Andy, all you have to do is hold him like a person that doesn't know how to hold a baby. <laughs> yeah. that's, not, that's not what Barrow would do. <laughs> Technicalities aside, you're able to maneuver him into an alleyway. I would say that um, the only person who isn't able to kind of move over in that direction very quickly, and Malarial, you'd kind of notice that this kind of matters. The two people that kind of came at you doesn't seem to notice the things that are going on behind him. Mm. Uh, Copperhead chasing Mine's uh, Spike and, you know, a Dwarf carrying him off um, to an alleyway as those four kind of move in that way. So um, the four of you uh, have him. Uh, he is unconscious, but 
you know, a simple action would, I'd say, wake him up. I mean, he's, you know, was knocked out for purpose, so. Okay. <laughs> oh. And now I see the issue of the, uh, Tim, I think I'm getting feed, or, uh, something from your, your side. Yeah, I think it's someone in the background or something. Okay, cool. <laughs> Alright, sorry. It's better than not being, you know, having sound for the entire session, so I... Who might have thought? Shabra Nikdo. Uh, um... Oh, yeah. You wanna, you wanna meet him? Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Well... Um... All I know, is he, is he, okay, never mind. all all I know is his contacts in the, uh, it's over there in the uh, Crystallis. Um, he kind of looks over across the canal way, um, looking at the tavern. You know, looks pretty common. It's actually a pretty low um, uh, building. It's not terribly tall. Um, it's like right off the water, right off the canal there. Um, probably about two stories tall. Um, looks like there's a balcony out front. Um, you know, and uh, kind of a stairwell that goes up to the side of it. Um, doesn't look like there's anybody out on the, like, you know, balcony up front, or looks like a porch kind of, like, well, balcony, it'd be a balcony. Um, and there's also a porch underneath it. It doesn't look like anybody's outside or anything, but you can tell that there are people inside, and from what you can hear, um, from even from this distance, uh, it does sound like there's a bit of music being played over there. Uh, sounds like, um, you know, a uh, piano, um, and... Um, mm. You know, just some music over there. How'd you get involved with this guy? I'm, uh... <laughs> I'm not really, um... I slap him. <laughs> look, look, I'm not a fan of a death cult, okay? I get it. Like, I understand it's bad. I get it. Okay? But, you know, when you're a bandit and you're trying to... You're trying to make moves, you do what you gotta do, okay? And the guild I'm a part of, Scott the Crystallis. We don't want any trouble from, like, law or anything, but... We are running protection, okay? They are they are hanging out. Where at? The Crystallis. Which room in particular? You gotta get you gotta get in Look, you gotta get into the basement. What's the best way in? I don't know. I've never been down there. Is he telling the truth? Seems Can I okay. Yeah, without magical influence, like he's, you know, talking. If you want to roll an insight check to kind of pick up... If you yeah, that's... Yeah. <clears throat> Seven. Yo, Seth. I don't think uh, you should be slapping him. I think we should be cutting him, and I pull my daggers out. <laughs> whoa, 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 he says. But, uh, Venki, um, so just a future reference for, you know, people watching and also just for the group. Um, insight is not a truth detector. You won't know if they're lying, but you will pick up on, like, you know, specific cues. Uh, he definitely seems to be afraid. It's 100% accurate. Um, not every day you get picked up by a group of uh, adventurers like this. Um, he definitely seems to be kind of um, looking over at the tavern, kind of like, hopefully, um, like, there's every time, like, you know, Seth stops talking or someone stops talking and he's kind of not focused on the conversation. He's kind of wistfully looking over there. Um, because it's in pretty decent line of sight, he might be hopeful that someone comes out and sees what's happening, you know, raises okay. the group. I put a cloth in his mouth. Okay. Well, he's not yelling. It's, again... I know. But okay. I, I, the, the fact that he's looking, cloth in his mouth, I'm taking it to the guard. Okay. Um, so, yeah, um, you kind of move about uh, the area. Um, everyone else kind of keeps, you know, to themselves. Um, does anybody stop him from that process? I'm just going to say, hey, Seth, uh, you know, I, I thought I was going to make him look like me. It won't kill him. It'll just, you know, make him bleed a lot, you know. <laughs> He'll pay for what he's done. Not by your hand. All right, you law types. Okay. You're all the same. So you head out of the alleyway back into the market area to go ahead and find as, the guard. As I'm walking him out, I take the cloth out of his mouth. You don't know anymore. I could let you go. 
And you're out of the alleyway at this point? Yep. Okay. So you'd see the exchange between Melurial and the two, which we'll go ahead and cut to. Um, they're kind of like, hey, who are you? Get out of here, you, you, you bum. I would suggest that you turn yourselves in as your compatriot has already been dealt with. What? And they kind of turn and they would see that their friend is being held and has a thing pulled out of his mouth um, at about the same time. They kind of look towards you and uh, yeah, um, one of them kind of looks over towards the canal way. If they make any, like, movements to raise a racket, like, if they don't surrender and come with us, I'm casting sleep on them. Okay. Go ahead and throw your dice. All right. right. They 20 both, hit points. They both pass out. Nice. Yeah. It, them up, it, it's very sudden, just kind of very quick. Um, you throw off the spell, and they drop to the ground, like, very suddenly. Um, Copperhead, as you're kind of getting out and kind of making that suggestion, you kind of look around, and you would see that there are a couple of individuals here that aren't really paying attention to the scene, but with, like, a whistle or maybe, like, a, you know, uh, a sound, might be focused to kind of look in that direction. You can also tell that there are a lot of people here who are just standing around and are out of place in a market, but for you aren't out of place. They are very much where they're supposed to be. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah, okay. yeah. So then I would uh, like quickly whisper in uh, Seth's ear and say, I think uh, there's others around. We need to be careful. Put that thing back in his mouth. Can you give me more information when I, get, when I tell him? I'll let him loose if he tells us more. I know he knows more. Right, there's a big risk though. He may say something. Well, I've he already done my whistle. action. I've already yeah. done my action. I took the yeah. Well, there's no actions here. We're, we're, we're just, yeah, we're, we're we're just, just rolling. Our, our well, I'm, I'm, my, my idea is literally take them to the guard. Right? Okay. All right. Dispatch them. They're no longer a threat. We know our next point. Does anybody want to help him with Dallas. that? Help him take them take him to the guard? So you've got a person who is a member of uh, possibly a cult, definitely a thieves group, um, a bandit group. Um, who, if he's capable of um, performing some sort of sound or look or gesture, might be able to inform um, allies um, who might rally to his cause or inform people back where it's important. Um, yeah. Seth, Seth, I'm sorry, Barak, I'll help. And he punches him in the head. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, so he was already basically on death's door, so are you punching? Bludgeoning is another type that can be used well, for non lethal. It's non lethal. It's non lethal. Okay, clock him in the head, and he's out like a light. Unconscious again. Um, I would motion for Seth and party to join me um, to collect the other two as well. And then I have something planned for once I get there. I'm, I'm trying to just like. I'm kind of like raggedy over like that. Please help me, Um, but like I'm trying to get them to come over here so that we can collect all three and take them wherever we're going. And then I have something uh, I plan just, on once they do do just, something else. I mean, the guys on the ground, they didn't do anything wrong. Like they didn't confess to anything either. Yeah, right. This man confessed. Okay, so the idea is these are small potatoes. Don't worry about them. So I would we then join. The I would join the party, and then I would cast uh, around uh, those with near Berwick, or if we spread out enough, around Berwick and move with him. Silent image, which I get to because I'm Twilight, or not Twilight, because I am Shadow Touched. Okay. I get to cast this for free once per day. Okay. What's the image of? Just kind of... Um, it is It is just an, a replica. Uh, oh, uh, it's kind of... Can it reflect refract light so it just seems like there's nothing there so we don't have a guy yeah. on our shoulder so i mean it creates a single kind of image um which you're going to be basically moving kind of with it doesn't really kind of move um so like a, a uh like a make yeah. it like some kind of like wheelbarrow or cart that you can pull with you so that it moves appear to be natural for the image that you're creating so like if you were yeah making a, a, a yeah like a merchant kind of moving through that's perfect um yeah. okay um, yeah, start to move through, um, and, uh, you find, um, City Watch. I'm Seth Highwind. This is Ian. Somebody turns to look at the cart. Uh, since we're at the City Watch, I dismiss it. Okay. <laughs> Two guards kind of look at you. Whoa. 
and they kind of like reach hands for swords. Um, explain yourself. I'm Seth Highwind of the Highwind family. We have captured Ian the Moose Latour. He has confessed to running a racket of protection for the Death Cult, the Meridian or Meridian Death Cult in the area. This man needs to be chained and imprisoned for trial. All right. Well, that's not a problem. We'll go ahead and drag him over to uh, Precinct 4, um, not too far from here. And um, if you want to interrogate him further, that's where I'll be. Um, we will question him, and we will require that you come at some point um, to Precinct 4 to fill out the appropriate paperwork. Of course. They uh, take the man, shackle him, throw him in the back of a cart, and uh, the cart moves of its own volition as they walk away. Can we turn back into a cart? <laughs> <laughs> I want that cart. I believe if, he, I believe if uh, she ends the spell, then... Um, I know, I'm just being silly. I it's can like cast it again, but it'd be a waste of a spell slot at that point. No, no. It's just yeah, just can a... you make a souped-up cart, you know? <laughs> like, maybe with some nitro and... Cart's cool. I live my life a quarter mile. Looking like a fast car doesn't make you a fast <laughs> car. <laughs> No, fair. that's what the nitro is for. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, <laughs> okay. Should we wait for nighttime? It's kind of close to it, anyways. I'm hungry. I know you're hungry, Berwick. Always. <laughs> yeah. Do you suggest we go to a certain inn to get sustenance for the evening? I think a tavern would be more appropriate. What about a tavern in an inn? I suppose, why not both? Any yeah. points? <laughs> there you're crossing yeah. the path. So, there are catwalks right. that kind of, you kind of climb a series of steps and then walk across the canal way, uh, descending steps on the opposite side. Um, and yeah, you would notice that, um, you know, people are passing you by, um, there are, um, you know, um, different kind of um, uh, segments for the uh, passageways that cross the canal ways. Um, for the um, community of Nock that are um, uh, that use wheelchairs, um, there's you know a whole bunch of kind of like processes like that cross the canal way. Um, the main one that you utilize is just you know a series of steps that leads to a catwalk that, you know, or a bridge that crosses over. Um, and when you get to the opposite side, you can see that kind of slotted inside of the space that's surrounded by very tall buildings. Um, you can see that there's this old wooden building. You can hear the piano keys kind of um, shimmering in the, 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 the darkness. Like, you can just hear them kind of clattering away. Um, and uh, some talk and laughter as you're kind of approaching. Uh, the door is um, basically non-existent. It's two small little wooden panels connected to, you know, pairs of hinges on either side. So you can just kind of brush in uh, when you enter it. Um, and very saloon-like. Um, and, uh, yeah, as you enter into the establishment, bear with me here. Hey, Seth. This just doesn't seem right. You know, I don't think death cults listen to music and laugh, you know? It doesn't seem right to me. Uh, quietly, I'm about to say. This is a front. The real happenings are in the basement. <laughs> That's good. Berwick's already at the bar drinking. <laughs> Berwick's already at the bar drinking, right? Okay, I think that shows um, pretty accurate. Um, yeah, and as you kind of enter in, uh, you can see that there's a you know large number of tables. Most of some of them have people seated in them. Um, as you kind of enter in, uh, Malurial, there's a guy kind of next to you in half plate armor, kind of looks up at you. You can see his face is kind of scratched to hell. Looks like he's fought, you know, some sort of wild cat and, you know, seen the worst side of it um, long ago. Um, there's uh, some folk inside that are kind of sitting, playing, you know, dragon chess, um, uh, bone dice, all sorts of different games kind of just being played. Um, you know, there's someone at the pianos, and unfortunately the music I had selected um, is not working right now, so we're just going to continue listening to what we're listening. Almost cool. Um, second time my sound has failed me tonight. <laughs> Great. Um, 
call this a test run. That's what we'll do. Um, <laughs> you sure are remaining upbeat, John. That's that's the key. Yeah. Um, you can see that there's a billiard table. Looks like you know a game that was discarded halfway through, um, or someone won very quickly. Um, lots of folks. Um, nobody that kind of stands out, but everyone seems to be kind of surly. Um, up above you, uh, Malurial and Berwick, as you enter in, there is a second floor. Uh, it looks like the center of the second floor is basically cut out, so it just forms kind of a balcony ring kind of around um, up above you. Staircase on the right that leads up to it. Look like there are a couple of nobles up in the, um, uh, uh, up on the balcony up above you, kind of directly in front of you. Uh, one woman, kind of reddish hair, kind of looking down at you as you enter in, um, curiously. The uh, main features that you'll notice of the tavern, uh, besides the you know uh, um, nice-looking piano, the billiard table, uh, there's a massive um, kind of bull skull on the back wall. Um, from what you can tell, it appears to be the uh, remnants of some sort of like aurochs or like massive kind of torn kind of beast, or perhaps a minotaur, um, for all you know. Um, but yeah, uh, the second thing that you would notice, or the third thing you would notice, fourth? The fourth thing that you would notice that would be of import is the face of the barkeep. It looks like the face of the barkeep is literally has literally been removed. Like his face has been pulled off of his face, and it's been stitched back on to his skull. Um, everyone else seems to look normal, except that guy. He looks really weird. But he's pouring a dwarf a drink at the bar as you enter in. There was one outside, on the uh, on the wall outside near the door. What was it on? Just, the wall just on the like a small little, just very hard to see kind of marker. That copperhead probably pointed out to Malurial, who then pointed out to you. Okay, I'm gonna try this. Let's see if that's any good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, you walk up. The uh, strange uh, barkeep kind of looks at you, and when he speaks, it kind of looks like a, a very strange kind of um, uh, circumstance where his lips kind of move, but um, also sort of kind of stay in place. And he says, "What can I get you?" Outside, please. All right. Biggest tanger you have. <laughs> Horse two. Um, and uh, they kind of make a <laughs> sound as he kind of pours them out. You can see that his handling yeah. of the cup is very precise. And the head on that appears to be pretty perfect. Um, and uh, yeah, he puts the two tankers out in front of you. Um, uh, he sees a hand come up from underneath and behind the bar. Can you make that three? <laughs> Sure, and uh, as you kind of move into position, uh, you see him kind of reach down, pull out a stool, and kind of drop it down in front of you, and you would see that the stool has a lever on the side. It's very similar to like a desk chair, so if you want to sit in it, you just hit kind of a switch and it like lifts you up or descends you down. I do so. Yep. I don't suppose uh, you have any elderberry wine, do you? Nope, sorry. Uh, ran out of uh, elderberry wine, I'd say, uh, like maybe 50 years ago. <laughs> uh, then I would have your closest approximation to a light lager, please. <laughs> Pours you the exact same <laughs> shit that they got and sets yeah. that out on the table. And while he's doing that, um, I just want to study the the scars on his face and see if anything comes to oh. mind of what the per I mean Sur I'm assuming he's trying to not look like he used to surprisingly no scars on his face it just looks like he cut around the side of his face pulled the flesh off of his muscle tissue and then bolted the face back on stretched taut across it and for some reason it seems to you know function it doesn't look like it's you know um, it, it looks like it's reposing well it doesn't look like it's you know turned kind of what you would expect from kind of flesh that's been removed from a body kind of like mm -hmm. uh, uh, neck it just, just becomes bad um, yeah no necrosis yeah necrosis but his face seems to be fine but just not attached 
Uh, being being trained in medicine, uh, do I know of any procedures uh, like the procedure that would be involved in that? No. Yeah, it's definitely magic. I mean, for sure. Okay. Um, but I mean, again, <sighs> evil and good magic is kind of hard to like differentiate because it doesn't look like it's something of that effect. It looks like it's more mm -hmm. of a life death kind of uh, dichotomy okay. versus a good evil. Mm -hmm. Is it nah. like that? Like yeah, Death Moravian, very true. <laughs> um, and so, uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, yeah. Knowing of a religion and being trained in that, and being a priestess of the goddess of life herself, uh, does does that recall to mind anything that? This um, is yeah. This is not a, you, you, you. You barked up this tree a bit. I just want to make sure. We're, uh, no, it's it's not. It's not a religious practice. It's definitely yeah. a a magical effect that's keeping his face not, um, you know decay um but it is certainly not um a religious rite that you're familiar with but yeah. obviously he has killed someone and taken his face off and put their face on that's not his face he killed someone and took their face yeah yeah i could eat a peach for hours probably god why do you have to go there <laughs> uh, yeah bartender fucking Nick Cage, uh, i'd like man. uh I'd like two beers, please, and I'd I'd like lay I'd like lay a gold piece on the on the um on the bar, slide over to him, and then like lean into him and say, hey, "What's the name of the beautiful redhead up on the second floor?" And I look over at her. Takes the coin. You see him place it in between like his teeth. You notice that one of his molars appears to be solid black, but not like black like it's rotted away. It looks like it's made out of like a black metal, and he kind of bites into the coin looks at it, and then drops that into apparently a pot behind the, uh, the bar. Looks uh, kind of up a little bit. Just, I don't know. <laughs> See a regular around here? He kind of looks at you and he says, listen, I run an establishment. That's about it. I don't know any of these fucking people. I don't know you. Uh, you probably could have been here last night. I wouldn't right. give a shit. Alright, All right. don't worry about it then. Just she reminds me of my ex-girlfriend, Letty. And then I'm going to take the two beers that he gave me and try to head up to her. All right. Um, sure. So um, we'll cut back to you here in a second. Um, Malarial confounded by the weird face man. Um, Dan thinks he's got the right of it. Um, what is uh, Venky doing? Drinking? Oh, yeah. I imagine he's like two hands drinking the mug. Big okay. smile on his face, like enjoying the music. Yeah, I mean, the uh, ale's not bad. I mean, it's it's not bad. It's not the best you've ever had. It's not the worst. And it's definitely above average. Um, but yeah, um, and, uh, oh, Barrick's drinking as well. Um, Seth, drinking or no? I'll, uh, I mean, yes, but no. Anyway, I'm okay. not really enjoying it. Like, I don't really <laughs> Sure. It's a weird scene to be sure. But I'm not enjoying it. I like it. The lady with the piano kind of like, um, you know, um, just, just, you know, uh, is kind of going for a little bit more of kind of like an upbeat pace. You notice that a woman kind of in the center of the room has been kind of, you know, talking to people. Looks like she might have been like a server or something. But you can now see that she starts dancing kind of in the center of the, the, the room, the center of the hall. Um, and she does a lot of performative steps, like a lot of slamming her foot down on the, uh, the ground, um, a lot of kind of high kicks over people who are sitting, you know, near where she's dancing. Um, she kind of, you know, moves up and jumps onto, like, um, chairs. She's being very high energy, uh, which doesn't exactly match up to the music, but it's definitely, like, um, the energy's outpacing the music is what I mean. Um, not so much that they don't match, it just seems like she is much better than the player at the piano if that makes sense but yeah, yeah. Um, the dancer continues to play um, and everyone seems to be just kind of annoyed with her presence or some of them are kind of like focusing in on her um, but yeah um... I'm going to kind of take a walk around the bar noting any creaking any hall. like I want to step kind of hard sure feeling kind of <laughs> you get what I'm putting down I like, do and that's uh, gonna draw some th looks, but hold on a second. I wanna try and do it like, I wanna try and be stealthy. I wanna try and do it. So, uh, go ahead and make a stealth check, and then, um, uh, Kevin, you said you were heading upstairs. Um, yeah. So that's why I've fluffed the map on you. 
Uh, you'll note that um, there are more people upstairs. This might get mm -hmm. a little confusing because there will be people who are on higher levels um, and people who are on lower levels. I have an indicator as to how and who's where, but I'm going to go ahead and let you know that the ones that just appear are the ones up above. Um, across the way from you, um, all the way on the far corner on the opposite side, uh, there's an orc sitting alone at a table by himself. Seems to be minding his own business. Uh, there's uh, two ladies, kind of, um, well, one lady rather, and um, uh, sitting over across the way uh, by herself, um, kind of on this kind of area here. And um, there are the two ladies I mentioned, which would be uh, this lady here, and uh, there's one underneath one of the other characters. Uh, there's a, a man at the top of the steps wearing kind of like a, you know, red bandana around his head um, and it looks like he's also wearing kind of the same kind of blue garb that uh, Ian was wearing and as you're kind of stepping up the steps he kind of looks at you and he says excuse me I don't believe you're welcome up here oh really yeah really I, I just bought some beer for uh, the young lady over there and I point to the redhead wherever she is is she over here then is this her um it's this one, the Tim Ping. You did say her, her hair was red, though, right? Yeah, there's one underneath there that's uh, at the same table. I think oh, okay. Dan is on top of that one. Um, so, yeah, there are two Sarah. ladies there. All but right. um, cool, cool. he, I there, would... there you go. Um, he says, well, she ain't be needing any drinks, so go on ahead and make your way back downstairs. Enjoy the extra beverage and make it quick. I think what I would do then is I would uh, I'd nod to him like I hear what he's saying, and then I would kind of see if I could catch the eye of the lady. Does she look over my way? Um, roll a luck check. Uh, just roll yeah, roll a d twenty. Roll a d twenty. All right. Oh. Oh, geez. Yeah. Why don't I just can I just roll something I have a plus zero in? I'll roll strength. That's a plus zero. You can just click on the. Ability. Yeah, ten. Ten is what I rolled. Yeah, no, she doesn't look at you, not even for a second. What if I, like, make a loud noise, like go, um, or, you know, something like that, like that people would normally look up for? Yeah, um, so, uh, the guy kind of, like, you know, grabs a hold of your shoulder after you do make a loud noise. She doesn't look over there at all, and, uh, he starts kind of pushing you down the stairs a little bit more forcefully. I'd say, all right. So, Wait, all right, all right. You kind of start moving around the room. And start kind of like stepping loudly, uh, which kind of depending on dancing with the girl. Sure, which kind of gives uh, everyone around uh, kind of a, a strange impression. Um, you are dancing, so go ahead and make a performance check um, to see if you're doing any well at that, at least. Um, with a fourteen, she's kind of like dancing circles around you, but she seems to be kind of interested enough to kind of keep dancing with you and she doesn't seem to be caring about the uh subterfuge like it seems like the um uh people in the table nearby um are noticing them uh go ahead and put yourself adjacent to her at any point and uh i think this is good position positionally i'm gonna go ahead and um one second here Remove some stuff. This table here. Just you're adjacent to her. That's it. You're dancing with her. Berwick wants to get up and dance as well. As you're thinking about it, um, and kind of getting up, you can go ahead and move. I'd say ten feet from your position, um, Andy, if you'd like. I leave the beer at the table. Yeah, of course, of course. Um. As you're kind of like moving that way, Berwick, you'd see that the two guys in weird uh, white kind of like uh, uh, like hoods and robes um, have already gotten up and are kind of behind uh, Seth. And as and this is about to go down, Berwick, you would notice that both have drawn blades and are kind of moving behind Seth with a very kind of intent kind of um, purpose. It looks like they're about to kind of grab a hold of him and kind of 
mess with him. Uh, I would let out a battle cry and throw myself at them. <laughs> what would that battle cry sound like? Ah! <sighs> All right, nice. All right, uh, I dig it. Um, so, um, because of that, because of the way it played out, music battle. Hold on. Ooh, the that's, music. That's perfect Ooh. music for the Berwick. So, yeah. for the Come very on, for the first round of initiative, we're gonna roll initiative. Everyone, with the exception of the two bandits, and Berwick is surprised. Understood. Yep. yep. Surprise, surprise. All right, I got to click. There. We got to initiatize. Oh, it, didn't roll. it didn't roll for me. Uh, do it again. <laughs> okay. So, um, operationally, the room is going to be a chaotic mess. So, I will explain what I'm planning to do with that um some of these people are on the same side some of them are not um this will become very apparent very quickly that said uh benki um you hear kind of a loud ah, and you're kind of like <laughs> <laughs> setting the beer down kind of, right <laughs> or what are you doing you, you can't take it i imagine for my surprise round you see like his eyebrows go up and just chug 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 six start. seconds <laughs> and then down okay <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, nice. Um, again, operationally surprised as well. You do not know uh, that they are coming up behind you. Um, this is based off your past They're perception. Okay. Yeah, and you can see that there are two uh, individuals coming behind you. Uh, those two individuals. There is a large battle. My sword? Uh, no, you no actions. Um, but yeah, um, they kind of um, understand um, like what's going on here. One of them turns to kind of catch into um, the bandit. You also see that as he kind of turns, he kind of looks over to the table behind you, Berwick, to your right, and kind of makes a, with his hand, kind of a gesture. You then see that the blade he's pulling out appears to be made out of obsidian, and he drags the blade across long ways to try and catch you in the throat. I'm going to make a single attack, and you'll note that um, it is out in the open. <clears throat> So that is something I will be doing from here on forward. No hiding behind the screens any longer. The fates that is a decide hit. what happens. The attack hits for five damage, striking out. Um, and so do I have that right? No, I don't have that. Sorry. Can I interrupt that? You haven't. You haven't raged. I'm not raging. Yeah, I'm not raging. You are currently surprised, so you cannot take reactions. I had my my initiative passed, so wouldn't I no longer? Hold on. Correct. Correct. So yes, you can take a reaction. I'll allow it. Um, I kind of want to bash. So effectively, role-playing wise, I'm going to bash him to do this try and hit my boy. But I'm going to use... Uh, let's see here. Let's There's like a chair near you. Um, you technically have to have a weapon drawn. You don't. I know what you're trying to use. But I'm going to be... I'll take for, a chair then. For flavor's sake, yeah. I'll let you pick up a chair in the process. I like that. Go ahead and throw it up on the table so we can read it i know what your inner inner posing is what it's called it's the new tasha's cauldron uh fighter uh style click on the speech bubble next to it in your uh description there it should post it on this uh, screen i don't see the name of it anymore oh my goodness uh let's see <laughs> seth highwind we're looking at uh, Interception. It's the second one from the top. Fighting style Interception. Right under second wind. Oh, that's why. Right. Sorry, I thought it was below. Yeah. So you're going to roll a 1d10, and you're going to add 2. Yeah, I don't have the macro in there, so you got to roll a real d10. All right, so um, perfect. Um so, uh, Barrick, you're running up, you see the blade kind of lance out at you, and you kind of like, ha! Ah! And kind of like squint your eyes, and you can almost feel the blade cutting your throat. You hear a loud crash as Seth kind of throws the chair in between uh, him and this uh, guy up in the way, and you watch as that guy cuts that chair into pieces, uh, the force of the blow striking it apart. Um, but. Some of it still hits, yeah. None of, no damage. Oh, no damage. Yeah. So he reduced it by five. 
He reduces the damage by the amount that he rolls, which was five. And you took five, so zero. Wait, I see three. I'm sorry. Oh! Yeah. Some of the splinters. Okay. Well, no, yeah, just a, a slight cut. Yeah, no worries. Okay. A close shave. I thought the result of the dice was three, not... I didn't see you added the two in there. All right, well, perfect. Um, uh, the one that's um, not um, attacking... I just w wanted to mention that Bearwick is not in the initiative tracker. Oh, weird. Why didn't you select your token when you rolled your dice? Uh, sorry. That would yeah. be my... Why? Silly goose. What was your initiative? 17... Wasn't it 17? Yeah. Well, uh, because of your failure to operate, <laughs> um, I am going to say that you are now going after them because we've already gone nope. too far. No problem. Um... Perfect. Um, and then we will reset at the bottom of the initiative to correct order. So, that said, uh, the other bandit will attack Seth um, and misses. Flares across the half-plate armor, kind of, um, you know, uh, lucky pauldron strike. Alright, Berwick, you are the only one who acts this initiative, um, so go ahead. So, I'm going to rage. Bonus action. Right, bonus action, rage. There would be time for me to take out my, my pick, right? Yeah, you can do it as a part of the attack action. Sure. So I'll take out my war pick, and I will go with the one right in front of me. Okay. Uh, so that is not very good. That's a 10. Uh, that's a miss. So, yeah, he, the, the fluttering of the chair, he kind of quickly turns the blade back and kind of catches the pick and pushes it away. Berwick, flank. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to can I can I move though continue to like move, yeah, and that this still puts me with it within his threat range. Mm -hmm. Looks good. Okay. Okay, and just to make sure people at home aren't confused, flanking is not a, a variant rule that I use. It's more just for flavor, I think. Yeah. Okay. So Malurial, you are surprised, but reactionally, what's kind of going on uh, with you? So this is happening. I. <laughs> set down the beer that I had taken maybe one or two sips of. I uh, straighten out my dress and, uh, if possible, ready my shield. If not, that's fine. Okay. Um, Alright, Copperhead, you are also surprised. And yes, stuff does appear to be going down. Um, well, yeah. Copperhead has question. Uh, where would I have been when this uh, shit went down? Would I be at the top of the stairs or middle? Bottom I would say the at stairs? the bottom of the stairs is where this hits the fan. All right, that's cool. So I can't really do anything really, since I'm surprised. Mm-hmm. All right. Does that guy seem to be getting into it? Like he's coming down to kick ass. So I was gonna actually uh, hint at that. Um, so you would notice that that guy <laughs> is starting to walk down the steps. Um, you would notice that as a part of his kind of movement here. Um, he's kind of reaching, he's not pulled the weapons yet, but he's reaching for weapons at his belt. It uh, looks like a curved blade, not too dissimilar from the ones that these uh, bandits are striking at Berwick and Seth with. Um, that said, on the, oh, end, yeah. on the bottom of the initiative, it seems that the bandits in this area seem to all kind of stand up, but so does everyone else, and it looks like it just turns into a massive kerfuffle. These two ladies here at this table... Um, just start like lashing at each other. It looks like they were just ready to fight anyways, and they're kind of like beating each other up um, at on top of the table and then under the table. Uh, this drunkard guy, uh, for no reason whatsoever, throws a tankard um, and uh, hits uh, this guy here uh, and knocks him unconscious. Just chucks a tankard across the room, empty, um, and slams that guy <clears> in the <throat> head. Um, this guy kind of stands up, um, confused, and slides underneath the uh, billiard table. Um, and these two over here, I'm sorry, this guy over here appears to kind of get up and look at the fight, um, also reaching for weapons. The piano player plays, um, but nobody else seems to uh, do anything else. Um, it does look like the two at this table and the two at this table are bandits. And so is the dwarf at the bar. Uh, Venki. Venki. Yeah. Let's play this smart. Uh, I cast Mage Armor on myself. 
Okay. And then you'd also activate your ward. Yes. Perfect. <clears throat> That's it. I think I'm actually going to stay right where I am. Awesome. The armor of uh, kind of arcane energy forms around um, Venki. And uh, he kind of. Do you stand up from the stool? No, I imagine I stand up onto the stool. Perfect. Perfect. Um, for flavor's sake, and only for flavor's sake, because, again, it, it, it happens to me all the time. <laughs> the chair, you hear, like, a kind of sound as, like, the weight of you standing on it oh. is kind of forcing <laughs> it down <laughs> a little yeah. bit, but not a lot. It's not all the way down yet. It'll be, like, another maybe two rounds before it's all the way down. Um, <laughs> Seth, you are up. Draw my long sword. Yeah. Your life is forfeit. <laughs> that reminds me of Fire Emblem. <laughs> like you're gonna roll a crit right now. <laughs> it's just gonna be like a smiling kid's face. Your life is forfeit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a pretty good hit. Yeah. Um, you're striking at the one in between, right? Bear wick and that, yeah. Yep. Damage. Ooh. And um, everybody gets to learn another uh, fun word that we understand. So uh, those of you who are not familiar with this games group, um, what he just did is what we call chatting. There are three <laughs> stages of life points. There is maximum hit points. There's bloodied, which is equal to or less than half hit points. And then there's chatted, which means they have one hit point remaining. Sometimes this will be said because it's fucking hilarious. Someone in our <laughs> community named Chad... <laughs> does this all the time and he's earned um uh, he's earned it he's earned it so yeah one hit point on that guy um all right any movement from you uh i'll hop up on top of the table nice shake it the table starts Kicking to tip over beer. from his way okay so like kind of like in a, a flourish i kick the uh, tankard into his face to kind of distract him. okay more for fluff um yeah it kind of bats it away very quickly bringing the blade about um as you kind of strike into that guy um he kind of spins about kind of like was i believe kind of... it's the dwarf's turn oh right because we forgot to move him yeah go on go ahead <laughs> brooks as well struck seth um and he's going to, let's do Reckless Attack and attack the one that Seth just hit. Boy, so 17. a 17 is a hit, right? Yep. That's six piercing. All right. The dwarf kind of jumps up as the guy's turning around to face off with Seth, bearing the pick into the back of his neck and then dragging him to the ground very harshly. Um, he's a bloody mess. Not done yet. We're going to use our Battle Rager armor uh, feature and do um, a melee attack against um, the other one. Okay. Go ahead and roll the... Um, I think it's unarmed would work for this. I see you put in their armor spikes. Oh, if it has... Attack. Yeah, then do that. 20 to hit. Yep. D4. Oh, I forgot to put rage damage, so I'm so... Damage. Add that to the damage, okay? Yeah, yeah. Roll damage with the armor spikes. So it's seven total. All right. So burying the spike of the pick into the back of the head of the, that one, kind of very quickly depositing it, and then jumping in and kind of grabbing a hold of the uh, guy, very quickly moving across the body with the armor spikes. You watch as he, too, kind of drops to the ground, a bloody mess. Um, a lot of his clothing and attire kind of torn apart by the just fierce um, battle rager technique. Barrick done. Air duels are under arrest. The They're dead. Bandits um, very quickly move around the table to Berwick, seeing an opportunity here um, because of his reckless nature. One of them jumps up on the table, and all four of them very quickly kind of move in on Berwick to attack him. Uh, four attacks, all with advantage. I believe two of those hit. Two of those hit. So seven and two damage. So you'll be taking a total of three and then one. So that'll be a total of four damage. Okay. 
All right. Um, the uh, girls continue their fight here at this table. Um, again, they do look like younger uh, women. Um, it does look like they are yelling obscenities, and it sounds like someone's name is coming up a lot. Um, hmm. You see the, the, the guy underneath the billiard is kind of like uh, soiling himself um, and like kind of cradling his head, shaking, very scared. Um, this guy here will get up and leap up onto the table behind Seth. Uh, kind of distracts you for a second, and he it's will... Is it using your reaction? Brace. Perfect. Um, go ahead and roll a... Uh, what is your superiority die size right now? D8. So roll a D8. And then make an attack. Okay. So a nine will miss. Um, as you kind of brace for the attack, spinning about, quickly throwing up the um, the blade, um, you watch as he kind of brings up his pauldron, uh, or not his pauldron, his, uh, his bracer, kind of catches it, kind of drags across it with steel sparking everywhere. He then kind of drops down and then throws an, his own kind of upward glancing attack with a mace <clears throat> um, and then brings it back down very quickly. Ouch. For a total of nine damage as he kind of rings you in the chin and then slams it on the top of your head. All right. A uh, guy from upstairs drops down and kind of lands on the ground uh, behind him not too far off. Um, Any time now, folks? Well, you know, we were kind of surprised in that round, too, you know. The dancer looks like she's still kind of in the midst of the dance. It doesn't look like she's really joined the fray or realized that there's a brawl happening or that she gives a fuck. She reaches out with her hand to you. Um, uh, Dan, do you take it or no? Yes. She very quickly kind of takes your hand, like presses off and then spins forcing you from your position and moving you to this other table. Um, and then she kind of like, you know, flourishes as she kind of spins, like her uh, attire kind of spinning around her. And you see the guy with the mace kind of go, Fuck! like as you kind of fly away from him. All right. Uh, Malurial. Oh, sorry. One last note. The guy comes down the steps uh, and stands behind Copperhead. It doesn't seem like he is moving past you because you're kind of standing in the way. And he kind of says, move, or I'll move you. Now, Mallory. Yep. All right. Such pointless loss of life going on. May everyone please take a repose of sorts. And I cast sleep at second level. Where are you casting it? Uh... Uh, oh gosh, I hit it way too many times. Cancel. Alright, um... I think... You can put me to sleep, whatever. Well, it starts uh, with the lowest hit points, and I don't know if that's you. So, centered on this guy, I think I can get all the way from guy who dropped down um, around this whole circle. Perfect. With the number of hit points that you rolled... Uh, one second here. Oh man, my my really cool um, stuff isn't. I'm gonna have to fix that. Again, test run. We love to see it. Uh, <laughs> sleepy time. Sleepy time. Ah, oh, sleepy time. Sleepy time. Sleepy deepy time. The uh, dancer and the um, uh, guy. The dancer seems to be unaffected. She doesn't seem to even like. It doesn't even face her at all. The guy on the chair or on the table on the other side who with the mace, kind of turns and is looking at Seth, and you can see his eyes kind of, and he's back to focus. Um, okay. Um, solid. Please, stop this violence at once. <laughs> um, Copperhead? Alright. So, when, uh, when this fool comes down the stairs and uh, tells me to step aside, I'm going to set down the two beers I have in my hand. Right there on that little table. Yeah, right there on that little table. And then I'm going to turn around to him, and I'm going to, in a one quick motion, 
pull out my dagger and try to jab him with it and say, move out of the way of this. Jab him. So I'm going to roll. Actually, I'm going to use, if I can, can I use my uh, combat knife to uh, try to bludgeon him? No, I don't want to. I'll just stab him with the combat knife. Yeah. What the hell? I'm not going to bludgeon him. All right, there we go. Okay. Boom. It looks like a 12 is probably not going to hit him, is it? Um, it doesn't. So as you kind of pull the combat knife, you kind of do a little bit of a flourish, kind of trying to decide what side of the combat knife you're going to use. And as you kind of bring the blade in to kind of stab him, you watch as he kind of brings his uh, weird, um, you know, dark blade to block and goes, Oh, you're one of them, huh? <laughs> like he's happy. <laughs> um, Oops, can I do something else? Um, can I use a bonus action to... I don't know if it's cutting action. Can I yeah, it is. disengage? You can. The question is, can I disengage through him? Can I go past him up the stairs? You can. I will say that you cannot move through the spaces of other creatures, which is accurate. But if you are attempting to do that because there is a railing present, if you want to be a bit more flamboyant in this gesture, I will allow you to make an acrobatics right. check to run up the railing past him. Oh, I'll totally do that then. Okay. Acrobatics check. All right, here we go, people. But did it roll? Maybe not. Thought I clicked on it. Okay. Try again. Try again. Oh, there it goes. Twenty-one. Hey, that's pretty good. All right, so you not bad. Uh, hop up onto the railing and run up past him on the steps. All right. Okay. Ah, see you later, sucker. Once you've gotten up there, you can see the two women that you are apparently pursuing. One of them has a crossbow out on the table and is kind of loading it. And looking over at you like confused. Oh, you don't want to do that, baby. Uh, Why don't we just make like friends? <laughs> a bit weird. Um, but anyways, the uh, bartender um, kind of shakes his head um, and is cleaning a cup. Um, at this point, the uh, looks like the uh, bouncer is um, not very concerned and is just kind of walking, kind of casually over to the ladies grabbing one of them and then kind of pulling them apart um, as he kind of gets in between uh, the two, um, kind of keeps them separated for a second. You then watch as the drunkard grabs another one of his empty tankers and throws it. Um, looks like he's throwing it at um, like the other side. You watch as the bouncer kind of just raises his hand up and kind of smacks the tankard out of the sky as if he's done this a hundred times in the past. <laughs> just smacks the tankard aside so it doesn't go towards its mark, which might have been the guy under the billiard table, or it might have been the guy he's already knocked out with a tankard. Um, Venki, uh, it's your initiative. Venki. Okay. Um... Yeah. I think I'm just gonna hit the guy standing on the table with a mine sliver. Okay. DC 13 intelligence. Okay. Yeah. All right, he fails. Go ahead and uh, oh, damage is four. Yeah, sorry, four psychic. And it looks like Mind Sliver also says the next time he makes a saving throw. Um, he subtracts a D4 from that run. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, done. Seth, up. Now, she does look like she's still kind of receptive to kind of take yeah, you in. Yeah, I continue dancing with her. Okay. Uh, in a way that it would um, give me uh, momentum to hack at these guys' legs, at the guys' legs above the table. Sounds good. So, um, yeah, you kind of, like, put your foot up on the uh, top of the chair nearby and still kind of have a hold of her hand and she kind of swings you like in that direction you push down the chair kind of drops down and you kind of step up off of its kind of dropping uh, to kind of land on the table uh, and are basically being thrown into him um, if you're making an attack you do so with advantage Crit. Ooh, awesome all right for flavor My purpose goal was to literally cut his legs out from so yeah, it's more of uh, your body and the sword are kind of going into him, and you've hit him in the legs, which does topple him. But the thing is, is it also sends you kind of off the table as well. 
Uh, the two of you fall off the table. He hits the ground. You land on top of him. Do you want to move? Yeah, you're, you're technically prone, but you're technically on top of him. He is still conscious. Yeah, but just... Move. He is bleeding on the ground, though. I'm he is... Take five feet mm -hmm. to stand. Okay. Sword action point. You mean Down. action search? Or, yeah, that one. It's okay. I've also been paying attention to fourth edition a lot this last couple of weeks. <laughs> I still have advantage. Ah. No, you had advantage on the first attack. He's prone. Oh, uh, that is correct. Good call. Go ahead and roll damage. Nice. Seven slash. All right. Um, I would say if you're standing, you have to pick a direction, kind of go somewhere else, so you're standing over him, but not in the same space. Okay. And, uh, Berwick. Is he still alive? So, as you're kind of fighting your situation, everyone just passes out. Uh, kind of like this one bandit lady kind of just passes out on the table, uh, the drow behind you kind of just drops his two daggers and falls to the ground unconscious. Actually... No, he's not unconscious. Hold on, let me read math real quick. Um, I already said he was unconscious. What else can't be made to sleep? Okay, um, I'm gonna say it looks like that drow's getting up. Looks like they weren't very drowsy, Berwick. Uh, uh, drowsy. <laughs> I see what you did there. Drowsy. Right. So I'm, I'm still <laughs> raging. I'm going to reckless attack it. Sure. 25 yeah. to hit. Damage. Nice. And, and is, is he still alive? <laughs> Gone. Um, okay. Uh, ping, 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 ping. That's... So it looks like Seth has his situation under control. The guy at the steps looks pretty badass and a lot bigger than the guy that Seth's fighting. Um, you do notice that there's also a guy at the bar. Uh, who looks like he's pulling a dagger and probably going over to your casters. He's so far remained undetected. Um, Do I, I see that? Yeah, from your vantage point you would. So um, I'm going to move uh, in between them then. Okay, it, that was your movement? So I think I can, hold on, I probably can go further than that. Um, yeah, I think you can get up to him, there's 25 feet from you. Hold on. The only way you're getting to him is in a straight line. Which means that you have to move through this space, and that means you're going to provoke. I won't do that, but I'll go here and I'll yell, hopefully that I'll draw the attack to me. Okay. Okay. Got it. Do you want to? Uh, well, mm. I'm listening. You did kill a guy. Okay. <laughs> I was just making sure your rage so would be okay. I did do. I did do yeah. violence on this turn. Yeah. Okay. Berwick done. Bandits. Um, so the guy at the bar. Um, Pulls the knife up and looks like he's about to move towards uh, them. You're kind of like locked in position and ready. You see the guy with the weird face behind the thing. Just a flash of kind of uh, like metal flares across the bar. And you watch as the door kind of stops. And you see this red line across like his lips. And the top of his head just falls off. Oof. He's going to use that for later. He looks at you. And he says, no violence near the bar. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The uh, bandit that's fighting Seth, um, very kind of like brusquely, kind of gets up, um, using his mason shield, like he's a, a buckler on, to kind of get up. And uh, as he finally gets up, he does throw a couple of mace shots towards um, Seth. Uh, first one hits, second one misses. For three bludgeoning damage. All right. Um, the, uh, bandit guy rushes back up, um, you probably made it to the top of the steps for flavor purposes. Um, you can go ahead and make either an acrobatics check or an athletics check, uh, Copperhead. All right. I'm going to do a little acrobatics. Uh, a 16 and 16. Got two 16s. So 23 oh, is shit. better than that. He rushes up behind you and as you're kind of like trying to woo these girls in this really awkward like fashion and they 
seem to be with them, so... <laughs> he reaches up behind you, kind of big muscle arm, wraps it around your neck, and then hurls you over him, over the railing, straight Ouch. down to the floor, slamming on the floorboards next to Venki with a loud huthooch. Uh, you take a total Ouch. of 1, 2, D6. Not good. So you take 7 bludgeoning damage. All right, so I have fourteen, uh, 24 left. And then he jumps off of the railing, kind of like hops over it, and is descending down towards you. Um, so he hops over the railing, like jumping down? Yep. As I'm laying my back and I see him, I go, that's badass. <laughs> 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 you got to respect. You gotta yeah, respect. you got to respect game, man. The uh, scimitar comes straight down towards you and misses. You kind of roll to the side as he kind of hits. Um, okay, he is done. Bandits are done. And yeah, uh, Melurial. Tim. Oh, yep, sorry. Um, <sighs> hmm. Well, when they did violence at the bar earlier. Nobody did violence at the bar directly. Like, at the bar. Okay, so casting a cantrip at someone away from the bar, I'm good. Well, because... if it's a violence cantrip, you're probably not good. Well, thank you, Captain. Yeah, uh, mind spike on something. Yeah, but he's not doing it lethally. He's never... He hasn't cast one lethally yet. Or mind sliver he cast. Yeah, that's just a psychic yeah. spell. Or it wasn't identified as being a bad thing. You take All your right. chances. So far right. as to say, the guy has murdered a dwarf in a very quick action, so... Right. Um, so I'm gonna assume people are gonna want to rest up after this anyway. Uh, so I am going to present my holy symbol... And uh, and perform the Twilight Sanctuary uh, for one minute. Everyone who ends their turn that I, I guess, what, deem an ally, which will be the five of us and potentially Dancer Chick. Uh, yeah, we'll say Dancer Chick. She seems to be helping um, out. Uh, if they end your turn within 30 feet of me, you get temporary hit points equal to 1d6 plus my cleric level. Or you can choose to end one effect, uh, whether charmed or frightened on yourself. Um, and then after that, I will move over to uh, help serve as a distraction for my roguish friend. All right. Speaking of your roguish friend, Copperhead, you are prone and on the ground. Yeah. I'll go, man, this guy's protected some ladies up there. I don't know what it's, his problem is. And then I'd like oh. kind of get up, to, get up to my feet quickly, and I'm going to. I guess I'm gonna. Yeah, I guess I'll just do a regular dagger to the face. That's always a good thing to do. Yeah, dagger to the face. That makes sense. Dagger to the face. So it makes sense. All right. So I'm gonna roll this time, hopefully with better effect. That's better. Sixteen. Hit. And damage. Did it do damage, or do I have to click this? You have Sorry. to click the word combat knife. Yeah. All right, all right, I got it. It's not bad. Nine you have, damage. You have sneak attack because you're adjacent to an ally. Right. Also, I have something that says um, deadly precision that I think I get it plus two. It's already added in. It's already added. Okay, I got. It. All right. So then sneak attack. I'll roll that. Sorry about that. Is that sneak attack? Isn't it? it? All right. Check. Check mark the word sneak attack and then yeah. click the combat knife damage again. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll do that. So, oh. So a sneak attack should have been five. Right. Five and nine is 14, I guess. Okay. For the people at home. And then after I jab him a little bit, I'm going to be like, are you sure you want to dance? Are you sure you want to dance? <laughs> I, I groggily get up and stab him in the face and <laughs> yeah. say, say a phrase. <laughs> are you sure you want to dance? It's all, it's all about saying a cool phase, uh, you know, phrase if 100%. you're an action hero. 100%. You know? And then I'm going to use a bonus action to get the hell out of there. Okay. Can I do that? Yeah, disengage. Yeah, I'm You're gonna, going like, to leave your casters at the whim of. Too late. He's doing his thing. Let him do his thing. All right. Hey, I didn't survive this long by being a hero. You know, <laughs> this is not the first time I've plugged a person. That's from Big so. Trouble in Little China. 
All right, go ahead. Next person. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm kind of a coward. I just get out of the way. Uh, John, should I roll just one d, uh, the one d six plus four every time it's the end of someone's turn? You grant temporary hit point. Yeah. Um. So it's it. Uh. Yeah. All right. Uh, since you're not charmed or frightened, Kevin, gain seven temporary hit points. Woohoo! Thank you. I will take them. All right. And I'll give you a little wink, like finger guts. Is there any limiter on that? There's no like limiter that. on that. That's really good. I like that. No, that's a good one. It's a stupid ability. I love it. I love it. All right, Copperhead done. Benki, you are up. And, uh, yeah. So, who is, who is that? that? Thank you. I am actually going to mind sliver the guy who's next to us. The right there. Okay. Let's see. DC 13. Intelligence it's save. It's a failure. So three damage and a D4 penalty on his next save. Correct. All right. So after you do that, uh, you hear a voice from the bar kind of say, Hey, get away from the bar. And he starts kind of. Uh, He's not moving now, because he moves on one, but it does look like he is going to start moving in your direction, Venki. Speaking is a free action. Seth, you are up. Oh, I have a movement. If I, he, yeah. Does he say that as a free action on my turn? He says it as a free action on your turn, right? So can I can I just take, like, a couple of steps this way? Sure. Cool. That's what I do. And get six temporary hit points. Oh yeah, Seth, you're up. Do I have, to, I have to roll a d6, right? No, he already no, rolled. Already... Okay. Oh, it does. You don't roll every time. You have advantage, you have advantage. so it's not a fumble. We've avoided fumbles pretty well. Unfortunately, it's a, a teaching moment. <laughs> yeah, that's different. Mhm. Mm uh, Seth, done. Yeah. And then d6. Oh, yep. Sorry. Uh, Ten temporary nice. points. Barrett. Yep. We're gonna get it in his face. We'll do reckless attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, twelve. Boo. Miss. Um. Okay. So. Uh, you even in a second. blinding rage would note that the guy is starting to move in your direction, the barkeep, um, and he did just warn off Benki from attacking near the bar. Uh okay. He's mad at me. <laughs> I'm still going to I'm still going to use my battle rager armor attack. Okay. Whenever. 25. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, what's the uh 9? Sorry, it's just I was like staring at it. I was like And then I'm going to move this way. Okay. Right right there. All right. Um, it goes to them. Um, so he, uh, seeing the situation... Do I, get, sorry, do I get temporary hit points as well? Yeah. You get five. Okay, cool. Him, seeing Which for the, Barbarian is ten. Seeing the really? situation as it stands, um, we'll go ahead and... No, he, what he means is, is have damage. I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's effectively ten. He's going to go ahead and attack uh, three times against the, um, the cleric. Ooh. Ooh. Hit. 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 Oh no. Ooh. Oh no. Six. Uh, Looks like a total of 17. Alright. So five. And then another one. So. Alright. I'm at 19 hit points. Do you All get right, the benefit of your own temporary hit points? Yeah. I got. I had nine to start with. So. Okay. I only lost like eight eight HP from that. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, bandit engaged with uh, Seth will go ahead and um, make two attacks. Swing and a miss on the last. So six more damage for Seth. And let's see. The uh, uh, bouncer has moved the two ladies apart. Um, he walks over and takes all of the cups off of the table near the drunkard, 
sets them on the table uh, across from him, and then makes it to right about here. Um, at about that time, the dancer uh, will move up the table, down the table, around Seth. And um, in this motion, Seth, you can end your movement at any space adjacent to her if you'd like. And then it'll go to Melurio. And she gets 10 temporary hit points. She's not an ally. Okay, then. Uh, darn, that was a great roll. <laughs> uh, so, all right. Um, I'm away from the bar by at least one square. I have yet to actually take damaging action in this con combat, but since it considers or seems to continue on, I shall look at the... Uh, person in front of me um, who decided to hit me for n I don't know what reason. May Alwyn guide you towards a peaceful death as you hear the bell toll. Dong. And that doesn't have a damage roll included. If you go into the macro setup of it, it should have an attack option. You have to switch it over to it inside of there. Yeah. Toll the dead's weird. But if you just want to roll d12, that works too. Should be just one D12, actually. Right, yeah, one second. Uh, uh, I'll actually do that first, and I'll fix the thing later. Yeah, yeah. 11 damage. You said you were attacking. And he has a, the guy right next to me that has the minus 1D4 on his. Yeah. Um, wisdom save. Uh, wisdom save DC 13. Yeah, so roll a D4. Need to roll a four for it to fail. Zach or me? Zach rolled the spell, so Zach go and roll a d4. <clears throat> he passes. Three. Dang it. Um, alright. And uh, I gain eight temporary hit points. Alright. Um, Copperhead. Yeah. Are there and any. And I'm uh... gonna. Uh, Go ahead. And I, no, no, keep going. I'm not going to. Okay, you're not going to do it. I'm yeah. not going to pass the spell. Are Are there any uh, uh, chandeliers in this place? Oh, interesting. It's not allies. <laughs> Good point. What's that? Whenever a creature ends its turn in the sphere. Oh. It's not allies. So you could get ten hit points too. Well. Oh yeah. Wait for for what? Twilight Sanctuary. The sphere moves uh, with you, you and it lasts for one minute or until you're incapacitated or die. Whenever a creature, including you, ends its turn in the sphere, you grant that creature one of these benefits: temporary hit points, um, or end a charmed or frightened effect. So you have to grant one of the two. It's not you may. Uh, all right, I I grant it ending you effect. You can't this end turn. an effect that's okay. not present. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. That actually, that because you want to preserve life, right? Well, sort of. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. So the answer did get ten. Ten. What's that? So. Yeah. Huh? That's what I'm going with, Dan. Thank you. Copperhead. All uh, right, Copperhead. Are there any uh, chandeliers like right around this area, hanging up? Uh, chandeliers are about uh, 20 yeah. feet up, so it would be up the steps a bit, yeah. Alright, that won't work when I was going to do that. Well, um, you could run up I the can... railing again and then jump onto it. Yeah, but then I'm I'm hanging up really high above them. If I oh, was okay. like, I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to I'm just gonna come over here and uh, stab him with a dagger. That's Sounds what I good. do. Uh, let me roll. Let me roll the old dagger. Oh, did that work? Yeah, 16. Yeah. Or do I have advantage with a 19? I don't know. You do not have advantage. Okay. But I do have sneak attack because he's next to one of my uh, my guys. So it's like uh, 18 damage. Is that right? Yeah, he'll take 8. 8? Yep. Does he have something to... Maybe he had like temp hit points or something? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, temporary hit points he was going to give. 
out to someone else. I just plopped him on someone else. Uh, right, I'll use a bonus action to try to disengage and kind of go over here. Boom. Okay. Make it look like I'm about ready to. I'm out, kind of hiding a little bit, you know. That's that's a good idea. The bar. Right, that's what I'll do. The barkeep moves on one over to the edge of the bar, kind of points at you, uh, all of you in the corner fighting, and says, "Get them out of here!" And seems to be yelling out towards the bouncer. Um, all right, uh, Venky on twenty. All right. I think I'm just gonna hit the same guy with a mind sliver again. Okay. Oh. Um. Let's see. Uh, fail. So yeah. That's um, all. Seth, you're up. I'll take oh. my. I've been holding my longsword with two hands. Yeah. I will Thank you. Put it in my uh, right nine. hand gesture my left hand to the girl to swing with the momentum to go around the bar. Not a bar, but like you know what I mean. Kind of the yeah. same move. I'll be attacking. Okay. Holding her hand as I spin. Got it. That's a bad roll. So, uh, you don't have advantage for this. Um, that is going to uh, take precedent. So what I would like you to do, this is another teaching moment, um, weapons that fumble, anytime you fumble with a weapon, you damage the weapon, the weapon further degrades. It probably won't come into a point where it'll matter this evening, unless you continue to roll really bad. Um, but in the character sheet, under the weapon in your equipment slot, next to the weapon's name in parentheses, put fine. It is degraded, or degraded from its normal state to the fine condition. One fine dagger. And or whatever you got. Seth, that's it for you, I believe. And if you have, if you still have the PHP, if seven is more, set it to seven. If seven is less, disregard. You said nine in your in your thing. Nine was for Benki. Seven is for oh. uh, Dan. All right, Seth. sweet. Barrack, you're up. Yep. Uh, I'm going to try to punch this guy. Okay. Um, 17 to hit. Yep. So yeah. it's 10. And then um, I'm going to use my Tavern Brawler feat or, or ability. Mm -hmm. so, so that lets me uh, grapple. grapple. Try, try to grapple him if I so can. So make an athletics check, and the bandit will uh, make an opposed uh, athletics check. So, beat my 19. No, I do not beat your 19. Okay. Um, so he is not grappled, meaning that the next portion of that condition, him taking damage because he's being spiked, does not happen either. Um, or, uh, it goes to uh, the bandits. Um, he kind of uh, just begrudgingly kind of starts swinging wildly. Um, it does look like he is not changing his focus, though. He's still focusing on the priestess. I'm sorry, Tim. Is there 10 HP that happens after the turn, or how does? It... Yep. Sorry. It's they don't stack, it, though. It, it just replaces, right. right? Yeah. It just replaces if it's higher. Got it. These are against the priestess. Miss hit. Um. Miss. Just the one. So six damage. All right. Thank goodness. All right. Um. The guy on the ground um, is going to disengage. He kind of pushes across the floor and slides away from you. Once he kind of makes it to that point, you see him stand up, which takes half of his movement. And then he'll use his real action to dash, which will double his movement. Not the halving portion, but creating an extra 30. So he's going to go ahead and book it. Um, right about there. Uh, just straight running. It looks like he's like, fuck, <laughs> and is just going, um, like, beelining it, trying to get out of there. Um, that's it for bandits. Um, after the bandits, it goes to the bouncer. Uh, the bouncer kind of moves up 
to uh, you. As he kind of gets close to you, he places his hand on your shoulder and says, put the sword away. And then kind of like turns away from you, moves over and kind of pushes the chair aside, looks down at Venki and he says, no more spell casting. <laughs> and then looks like he's starting to move towards the crew in the corner. Shit. All right. Uh, Melurial. Uh, and then the, uh, the bouncer goes, ah, <laughs> as he gains how many temporary hit points? <laughs> uh, let's see. Perfect. Eight. All right, so you're up. Um, oh, seeing... how much did he gain on his turn, the bandit captain? I forgot. Uh, he was right. <clears throat> Five. Okay. All right, back to you, sorry. Um, yeah, seeing that they're looking to break all the things up, uh, that the establishment itself is not, uh, joining in on one side or the other, it's more of a thing of neutrality, um, I will simply disengage, um, and, uh, step away, um, to allow him easier access, uh, into, uh, to stop the cost station of my friends. Sure. Do you want to move further away to try and get out of the bubble? Get him out of the bubble. Let's see. Yeah. yeah let's do that. Okay. All right, Copperhead. And all right, Copperhead is gonna look at this guy, check out his back, like uh, take in what the distance is. Then he's going to do a somersault, jab his combat knife right in the guy's midsection, and then try to use acrobatics to kind of sneak, disengage, and sneak right back around the stairs and hide. So that's all going to be in one crazy action. Okay. And he's going to do it like this. Boom, boom. 23 to hit. Yeah, damage and sneak attack. Does uh, a total of 12 damage. So and seven. Then he he uses a, 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 a um, bonus action and his move and disengages and rolls right back around. I think he can get to there. Okay. That's like 5, 10, 15. Perfect. Yeah, oh, he, that... can only get to, he can only get to here, though, I think, actually. Yeah. I'll let you dive through the rails. That's fine. They're wide enough. All right. All right, cool. All right. Yeah, I'm trying to hide, too. You know, I don't want, I don't want to be kicked out of the bar. That kind of sucks. On initiative one, um, yeah, the uh, bar keeps just kind of like, you know, annoyed you see him kind of place his sword out onto the table which is just like a slender kind of straight single blade weapon um and he pulls out a rag and starts cleaning the blood of the dead dwarf off of it uh looking up at the uh, uh bouncer who's kind of you know very focused on the two of you um venki um I'm assuming he meant not to hit other people with spells. No, he pointed at you and he said, no more spell casting. You can take that however you want. Yeah. Um, I'm going to look back at him and say, uh, sorry, and, um, uh, heroically take the dodge action. Okay. <laughs> nice. Seth? <laughs> I'll put my sword down. Take up my heavy crossbow. Fucker run. As you do so. I'm abiding. He told me to put my sword down. As you do so, and you kind of fire it off, you can see him kind of turn and look at you and go, What? Put my sword down. Nice go shot. Go ahead and roll the damage. Yeah, you shoot him right in the back as he's running away, like a really honorable guy and he falls to the ground dead he knows he knows what we're doing and you can see that the bouncer kind of turns his attention to focus in on you and looks very very upset it looks like his attention is completely yours now wait so so the nine cut through the thp that he got too oh that guy never got it he was never inside the ring he was on the outside i thought you i thought you said roll full for him no not that guy uh okay uh, okay, okay okay i said for the bouncer no, the he didn't shoot the bouncer. He shot the guy that was running away, who was never in the bubble. He was just on the outside of it the okay. whole time. Okay. Cool. Oh yeah. Um, Seth, do you want to move at all? And the dancer seems kind of like ugh, and kind of just moves away from you. Very disgusted by that. That's a turn off, man. 
<laughs> I'll stay. I'll. I'll. Oh, they just kill him. Where my sword's at? I abide it. I'm gonna put the sword down. Uh, yeah. Berwick. Berwick he is going to yell at the per that the guy in front of him. You shut up and sit down. He's going to intend to intimidate him. Okay. So as your action, go ahead and make an intimidation check. Uh, 17. Doesn't seem to be doing much to him. Okay. Yeah, uh, very much hostile and very much focused on the matter at hand. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, uh, Andy, if you have less than 9 THP, gain 9 THP. Thank you. The uh, bandit, not being so my a... rage goes away now. Yep. The uh, bandit, uh, not being a stupid person, um, is going to uh, attack you a lot. Um... <laughs> okay. I Ouch. believe he hits with one of those only. It does hit with one, yeah. Five damage. So that would be. And he's going to move back into the weird twilight aura. Go ahead and roll the D. And your rage ended, so it's the full five. Oh, yeah, it's the full five. That's right. But it doesn't go through your THP. Correct. Temporary for me, please. <clears throat> full ten. All right. Um, after the uh, bandits, the uh, bouncer walks over to Seth. What's that? I was sitting at the chair. Yeah, that's great. Uh, go ahead and make a um, athletics or acrobatics check. Your choice. Uh, neutral. I'm letting him do what he wants. Then he takes you and picks you up and he starts to move you. Escort me out of the building. Also, in that process, he'll be pulling your crossbow, if it was in your hands, out of I your hands. Okay, he leaves it there. Alright. That's happening. Um, and then he gains temporary hit points, but I think he's already got a bunch, so that's fine. Malurial. Um, it very much looks like the uh, bouncer's attention is focused on Seth and dragging him outside of the building. Yeah, I don't want to keep fighting if it's supposed to end, but this bandit is obviously going to keep aggressing. Clearly. So... Again, may you find peace as you hear Ilaria's bell toll for you. And, wow, and I rolled crappier on the D12. DC 13 would save. I think he still has the minus 1 D4 because he hasn't made a second carry out. He does roll that uh, for me, please, Zach. And the uh, damage is actually going to be the 3, not the 6. Correct, yeah. yeah. That's why I was sad, is that I rolled less on the D12. <laughs> But he takes so he has seven so the two dice left. the two the two sides there the first one is the d8 roll the second one is the d12 roll so even though the one it's not the higher of the two it's the dice that is yeah prescribed yeah yep cool. um not much uh doesn't really seem to damage him at all i mean you're healing yeah him. you're healing him more than you're hurting him um and i will we're just gonna uh... yeah if he has to move further than that he gets an opportunity oh, we'll go there because I was on top of someone so I'm just moving away alright the uh... Uh, turn goes to Copperhead all right. Um, all right. Um, what I'm going to do is, first off, I'm going to look up and see if um, if the redhead from up on the second level is like watching down at us. Is she watching what's going on? Did you hear me? I'm sorry. Say again. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Copperhead wants to look up and see if the lady from the second floor is watching what's going on down down the first floor. No, it looks like they've left. Oh, damn. All right, well, then I don't have to impress her or anything. So I'm just going to... 
I'm just gonna take out one of my throwing daggers, kind of kiss it, and throw it right at the guy. Okay. You know, trying to stick him. Yeah. So you have advantage on that attack. All right, 17 or 24 then, I guess. Hit. 24. That's not a sneak attack thing, is it? Why does he have advantage it on the? Is. Why does because he have advantage? Because he's That's, next next with me. That's not how oh, okay. that works. He just gets sneak attack. He just gets sneak attack. Oh, he just gets sneak attack. Sorry. Yeah. But not advantage. Okay. Right. So the 17 hit. Uh, it does. Okay, cool. That's uh five sneak attack and seven piercing. Right. That's 12. If you add right. Yeah. All right, cool. Does that kill him or not? No. It just right. only got through his temporaries a little bit. Son uh, of a bitch. I think for my movement, I'm going to move up to the top, though, and kind of look around and make sure that maybe she left me her number or something. No, yeah. Um, it, <laughs> it, it seems that she's oh, had okay. plenty of time in the last four turns since you last saw yeah. her to leave. It looks like the uh, everyone upstairs has already left. Uh, it looks like the Ark is still in the corner, uh, but from what you can tell, he seems to be crying um, in the corner. Uh, huh kind of just to himself looks like it's a nice kind of like pouty kind of like wet sob um probably not even related to what's going on downstairs just seems to be in his cups seems to be in his own uh, his own elements in his own mind having a really bad time of it you know yeah he probably lost the one he loved lonely night so can, can we hear him downstairs just <laughs> the lonely... I like the cry. That's good. Lonely night and knock, you know. I mean, okay, so Copper has done on initiative one. The uh, barkeep um, kind of looks um, pretty sternly, but again, his grotesque face is hard to kind of discern. But he says, "Beckrar, get out of here!" And he kind of seems to be pointing at the uh, the bandit guy. Who doesn't seem to be caring what he's saying? Venki. I was told to stop using spellcasting. And yeah. so I'm going to actually go sit right back at the bar where I was and um, look at the bartender. Can I get another or are we we done? Or is he a drink? Seth. I'll, uh, I'll move out. You're going to attempt to resist. Well, I just I'm I'm like I imagine he's pushing me, and I'm just gonna. No, he's walk holding me. you. Like, yeah, I mean, if you well, want to, you're 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 leading him, is what you're saying. I'm trying to like I'm leaving. Yeah, if you're not right. running, you can move no. a total of thirty feet, and he'll go with I'm you. With you. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I'm okay with that. Bearwick. Uh, if you don't have more than 7, gain 7 THP. Or set to 7 THP. Um, Perwick is gonna try to be smart and take the dodge action. I mean, it doesn't look like that guy's stopping the fight. <clears throat> but, yeah, dodge it up. Okay. Um, the, uh, bandit will go in full itinerary with disadvantage on these attacks. Ew. Miss, miss. They all, they all miss. You watch the second attack with a scimitar as he's swinging. You kind of duck to the side. He hits the, uh, like the, the balk or the, 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 the banister on the, um, the stairs, and his weapon shatters like glass. Then he kind of uh, angrily kind of spins the dagger around and kind of trying to get you there, and uh, also misses with that. And uh, yeah, uh, once he's done, you, you suck. The. <laughs> Um, Bouncer kind of moves you towards the door with his action he's going to give you one last push and stay out he says and he kind of turns his attention back inwards it's very hot outside or inside and like <clears> as <throat> you're kind of pushed out into the night it's kind of like a like a, a change of pace like the atmosphere is very different outside uh, it's noisy outside uh, certainly certainly a bit noisy outside uh, but uh, definitely a different atmosphere, to be sure. We'll get back to what's that like uh, on your turn. Uh, Malurio. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Why? Um, yeah, I, I'm just going to... Uh, can I end a, a Channel Divinity early? Probably. It's like a spell. Whatever you want to, right? Probably. Maybe. 
doesn't like a... say. It just doesn't last a minute. <clears throat> or until I'm incapacitated uh, or die. So. Yeah, and this is round uh, six of that, by the way. So you'll have a total of uh, four more rounds, it looks like. Yeah, I'll just... Um, I'll... I'll, I'll uh, I'll just start walking toward the exit to um, keep company with... Uh, as you're walking that way, the guy over on the right side of the, the room, so to your left as you're moving, uh, he says, Hey! God, can I get another... <laughs> and a little bit of, like, vomit drops out of his mouth. <laughs> the guy who's been throwing yeah. tankards <laughs> the record over off on the side. Um, all right. No actions or anything? Uh, I guess if I move, um, you know, I'll just move, I'll take the dash action and just move outside. <laughs> Can you t tell me how many temp, temp HP I got after the end of my turn, Tim? No, you, uh, you were it. outside my sphere, so you didn't get any. Okay. Yep. Uh, Malarial done. Copperhead up. Yeah. And I, w I would say something to Seth, like, Seth, why did you continue to fight. They were not our true enemy. I imagine you as part of the banditry, right? But not the death cult who we are looking for. Perhaps? Why wouldn't they be? Because we, had, we were given information that they're only running protection. Cut from you all. You guys yeah, have a rich conversation. Uh, certainly. Um, Copperhead, though. Copperhead. After going up and down these stairs a bunch of times, he's like, I gotta get down there. And he's like, jumps on the banister, slides down, hops down here, and then he like, jumps over and jabs him again with his combat knife. Because he's gonna go for, uh, he's gonna try to bludgeon him actually on the top of the head. Try to knock him out. You know, that's what he does with his combat knife. Go with it. Hit. All right. Go sneak attack. No sneak attack, all right, six damage. No, you do have sneak attack. Oh, I do? Okay, yeah. nine damage then. It's a sneaky headbang there. Okay, going for an unconscious knot. Do I get a bonus, a plus one bonus to damage because of my uh, thing? It's called, uh, let me click it for you. It's called Fighting Initiative, or no, Wolf Pack Tactics? Yeah, that's it, Wolf Pack Tactics. Let me click it for a minute. You'll, yeah. you'll see. You should have a plus one bonus. See, I think it says, uh, uh, no, a, I guess the, that's that's the, not right. The feet. The feet is the, what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, the feet part. All right. Anyways. Anyways. I think that's right. So my question still stands. You're doing bludgeoning damage. Are you knocking yeah, him unconscious yeah. or killing him? I want to knock him unconscious. Thud. He hits the ground. That's how it's... I go, wait. I look over at Berwick and say, that's how it's done. Berwick nods. Yeah. That's All right. what happens when you dance with me. So, Benki, you're drinking. Seth, you're outside. You're not trying to push back in or anything, right? No. All right. Uh... Berwick, you are dodging. The guy's dodging. not unconscious. Are you doing anything? No. Okay. Just looking around. All right. So just to kind of put it to a point where we are, um, like a point of understanding, um, you would note that the bouncer moves to the people who are sleeping first, kind of stacks them a bit, and then kind of starts dragging them. You can see the spell of sleep kind of wearing off as they're being pulled outside. And they're like, hey, what's going on? And he just tosses them all out onto the uh, porch. Um, Seth, you're kind of out there. But as he does so, he gives you a look and he says, hey, no funny business. <laughs> and he stares at you. I nod. And then he turns and he walks back inside. The three guys who are kind of like groggy kind of looking at you going oh, oh, and they just start running out into the streets all in different directions not a single one of the same just like a, a bunch of crazies unrelated folk just running in different directions um and uh yeah um he comes back inside grabs a hold of a uh, bear car um uh, or becker sorry um and kind of throws him over his shoulder kind of looks at copperhead and kind of goes then looks over to the barkeep and says, uh, Slash, go ahead and give him a drink, huh? Yep. Yeah. No problem, Flea. Got it. Kind of pours one and, like, looks over at uh, Copperhead on the house. Nice. 
I'm gonna go grab my other two and drink all three of them. <laughs> yeah. One I left at the counter too. Uh, uh, yeah, you also notice there's like a two sip beer on the counter as well that I had left there. The oh, uh, a lot of beer. Quick work on that one. Piano player yeah. kind of stops playing, and she just seems to be kind of like not moving at this point, just very quiet over in her position. The dancer kind of sits at the bar, um, and then you see um, uh, the guy uh, behind the bar kind of reach down, kind of pull out uh, what appears to be like a pack ration and set it out in front of her. She nods her head. Um, but yeah, um, <laughs> if it's a, a dead body, um, you you would note that it's it remains, but um, it seems that... Uh, the guy who was knocked unconscious with the, the blow to the head, he's still unconscious and laying on the porch um, outside. The three who were just put asleep by a spell, or the four, rather, that were put to sleep by a spell, they run away. And, uh, yeah, the uh, piano player moves around and starts um, moving towards the dead bodies. You see her pull out what appears to be a bag. She kind of opens it up and starts pushing the people like head first into the bag and you can hear kind of like a sickly crunching happening from inside of the bag as you realize that the mouth of the bag is like a, a maw that's devouring the body mm. as she kind of closes it up it leaves it completely clean like um, on the outside other than the blood stains that left um, external from the bodies it seems to devour them whole um, but uh, she does it as if it's not even a big deal. She's not hiding it or anything. She's just swallowing up the corpses. Real, would you mind grabbing my sword and crossbow if possible? I will see if they will allow it. Sure. I'll just sit on the saloon steps, kind of patching up. I approach the bouncer and I say, my compatriot is requesting... Yeah, it's um, fine. Go ahead. And he points at Seth. And then he kind of moves to the side, like having done all his work, and sits in his chair. I grab his things, and I bring them back to him. Yeah. Hey, Berwick. We're going to have to go out and uh, maybe question that uh, guy we knocked out. Hopefully he's still uh, laying outside. Uh, after the beer. Yeah, I'm almost done. Good idea. And then uh, I'd finish my beer and go on out. Okay. Um, you uh, all come outside. The guy's unconscious, um, but uh, it's going to take a little bit more than just kind of like slapping him awake to get him up. Um, you know, um, probably some form of like. Uh, Smelling salts. Or... I stab him. Oh wait. I carve up his face. <laughs> Maybe I can make him look like me. <laughs> um. If you work at it, you manage to aw uh, awaken a uh, uh, Beckrar, um, and uh, yeah, he kind of looks at you surly and kind of indisposed, uh, annoyed. Um, okay, what? Yeah. My name is Copperhead. Yeah. See these marks on my face? Sure. I cut myself I cut myself up, so nothing's stopping me from cutting you up too to make you look just like me. You don't believe me? I take my knife and cut his face a little, you know, just like a gash spread his face. It's not he has no hit points, he dies. <laughs> no, 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 it's not a, no. it's not a damage. It's just like, it's just a little bit of something to give him, you know. I'm, ki I'm kidding about the he dies part, but yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's fine. It, it, again, he, he he wasn't laughing. I was laughing. You were laughing, okay. <laughs> he, Doesn't matter. I'm trying to, trying to do the good cop, bad cop. I'm bad he's, cop, he's, He seems to obviously be in a state of, what do you want? Like, he's confused. Like, it, it's, yeah. it's pointless to intimidate a guy and, like, gun up right. on him when he doesn't know what you're asking. What did you attack my friend? I told him to move, and then he attacked me. That's not how I remember it. He was trying to go and talk to Bess for some reason. Are you a cop? Are okay. you an... Uh, are you, like, uh... Are you, are you a like cop? A snitch? Are you a snitch? No, are you a snitch? 
We know you're a bandit. We want to know how to get into the basement. You're a bandit. Where the cultists are. Cultists? Yeah. You um. I mean. What? The ones that took Letty. Tell me where they are. Who? <laughs> I don't know who you people are. <laughs> I'm going to shake them a little bit like, you have to tell the truth. Uh, no, you're lying. <laughs> Chet will take 100% real quick. No. I, I mean, yeah. he totally got stabbed by this dude shaking him and asking questions. He may not even be related. All right. <laughs> like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this guy's related. What do you think, Seth? What do you think, Burwood? I believe that some of those sleeping on that were ran off did initially engage as part of the kerfuffle. I don't know if we could find them at this point, but they would be potential people to question if he was not immediately involved. Potentially. I don't know if we have that time. We need to find out how to get in the basement. We could ask. I don't know. There has to be a basement in there. That's where all the shady stuff so, goes on. Doing that, that thing. Did, were, with the whole, the. I mean, they have to have a set down hollow when I was kicking in. Sure, it sounded like there were floorboards over something. Typically, you don't build a floor like right. on the ground like that. So it definitely sounded like the floorboards were built above the ground. So there is some side yeah. of cellar. No, no, no. Or the, at least a crawl. Or space. there's a crawl space. Or a crawl space. Yeah. So fucking the moose lied to us. There's nothing. There is no basement. I maybe. mean, maybe. Good. Nope. I could prepare uh, a zone of truth tomorrow in my prayers if we wanted to question him in the morning. You can't hold me. There's no way he's gonna be alive by then. <laughs> the hell's wrong gonna, with you? Now you're talking. <laughs> I'm gonna oh. cut him bad. <laughs> I was referencing what my compatriot had mentioned about someone else we had had conversations with prior. You oh. know the moose? Who? I'll kind of look to uh, look uh, Millerial to look, see if... Look, if you want the truth of it, I'm a member of the Mardigan family, okay? I know there's been smaller gangs popping up around these parts. Um, the folks who come around here, uh, they call themselves... Uh, some out of towners, red daggers or something, and um, mm. they seem to try. To, they're, they're they're trying to take over turf here. The only reason I was here was with a couple of the um, scouts of the house of of, of the, the Mardigans, and uh, we um, weren't seeing anything too bad. So we were trying to see if we could just bring them into the fold. But uh, then you showed up, and you were being really awkward. And then you stabbed me. And, I didn't uh, stab you. No, he's looking at Conrad. <laughs> you stabbed me, and then yeah. I was assaulted by you and a dwarf covered in spikes. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was so awesome. Then you knocked me unconscious, and here we are. I, I was surprised when you woke me up because I was pretty sure that was it. I was done. Red well, daggers? I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> the inside <laughs> check would be like four to, yeah. <laughs> to tell that he's a liar. Could and I get I... your name, sir? My name is Malaria. G great. Uh, my name's Chris. Chris? Would it be okay uh, if... Do you need any healing? Wait a minute. Wait a minute here. Yeah. Malaria. Just get his name, how to spell it, so you can put it on the gravestone. That's all he's going to need. I cast Cure Wounds on him and heal him for 10. Okay. Whoa. Um, Since let's... when did our good cops start doing this stuff? <laughs> it's a really good Copperhead? Cop. Yeah. If, he's, if he is not being false with us, then he is not associated with the Moose. He is of a different gang and could possibly offer assistance to us. I am merely hoping to set things back to a neutral position. Sounds you are, great. You're very optimistic. So, I Chris, like that about you. 
but I don't trust this guy as far as I could throw him. Have you noticed any upside down moon symbols uh, around that have started to creep up? That might, that's the people making these symbols are who we are after. So he asked Seth. She asked Seth. No, she asked uh, Chris. I asked Chris. He said Seth, sorry. Uh, sorry, I meant Chris. He says, there's been some awkward camp symbols around here, but, I mean, different gangs have different markers. Most folks can't read each other's different markers. Um, so, yeah, notice some strange symbols. He kind of points over to the side of the door, the side of the door that you're kind of on on the right side here, and you can see that there is a upside down moon. Well, just so that the Mardigans are aware, this is uh, a symbol of a group that is not to be trifled with. Um, it's not one of those you could offer... death cults, is it? It is. Fucking shit. So that's what the Red Daggers are getting up to around here? I believe they are offering them protection. Fucking hell. And they mentioned your establishment as a place where they are holed up. So there they were, uh, holding the death cult in the basement. So we assumed you were part of the Red Daggers. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, he yeah. kind of looks over at uh, you uh, and the dwarf, and then to Copperhead. Are you with the Watch or something? I mean, he points over to Seth. Him, I can believe, but... The Watch? Are you kidding? That's what, what I'm saying. The watch. You definitely don't. But she's asking questions like she's... Like she's with the watch. And you gotta tell me if you are, though. You know that, right? Yeah. Tell him everything he knows. <laughs> we're not, right? <laughs> Technically, no, we're, we're not with the watch. No, no. no. We're, with the watch. we're not stitches, we man. We are not. I am here as a priestess of. Ooh, Alloy. I can't remember it. Uh, Alloyan, seeking to stop the stealth cult and their evil practices. That makes more sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well. Look, here's what I can promise you. Bardigans aren't going to be too fond of this. We're going to find the Red Dagger's leader. We're going to put him to task. I mean, this is obviously a situation that uh, we're not terribly fond of. Kind of puts us out in the open, you know? So, um, we do some stuff, but Death Cult's messing around with them. That ain't any of it. That's not, that's not us. Just good old-fashioned larceny. Protection rackets, what have you. Nothing too bad. So, unless you're detaining me or anything, I'm going to get to work letting my people know the situation over here. Then we're going to start scouring the streets, making sure these Red Daggers answer for the problems. Where do the Red Daggers typically congregate? Right here. But, uh, their boss isn't here. At least I didn't see him. Who's their yeah. boss? Guy named, uh... Shabra Barkdo, Shabra Darkdo, Shabra. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, that's not good. Kind of shakes his head. I've never met him, but uh, typically, uh, what I was told to look out for is a uh, guy who fancies himself an idealist. <laughs> uh, not as good a mask though. Um, so, uh, fellow in, um, robes and hoods and leathers and whatnot, wow. and he wears a white mask over his face. Ooh. There's no way you can arrange a meeting with him, perhaps. To no. Discuss. no, that's not something I've got at hand. But um, yeah, I'm probably going to go and talk to uh, Dugan and uh, make sure he's aware of the situation and uh, he can go ahead and process accordingly. It, Everybody it, it, named Copperhead would know Dugan Mardigan is the. Uh, he's the man. He's the, the godfather of the uh, family. What about Patrick Murray? He died a long time ago. This is several hundred years after that. If, if the Margadins, Mardigans would be so kind as during their conversations with the Red Blades were to find out where the location of this uh, death cult leader is. Yes. He passed it along to us. 
we would gladly take care of that for you. Sure, absolutely. And hey, um, yeah, this place doesn't have a basement, but it, I mean, if you're willing to go and check out the sewers, um, or if you know somebody in the uh, uh, sewer cleaners guild, you could probably invest in that. But from what I understand of this place, I mean, we scouted it well before the red uh, daggers took hold of it. Um, it didn't serve our purposes because it's, I mean, it's out in the open, kind of gestures around. Um, so, you know, everyone can kind of see your business. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's just really no back ways out. We're going to have to go have a talk with the moose. If you find out anything about the red daggers, please send a word. Where sh yeah, sure. Where should I send a word to? Kind of says the church. Kind of looks over to Seth. You got... Are you with the watch? or You're not with the watch, right? You gotta tell me no. if you are. No. <laughs> okay. Out of character, I'm not yeah. with the watch, right? You're not, and you wouldn't have to tell him if you were. Yeah, right. that's, that's, uh... <laughs> but, um... <laughs> that's, a myth, that's a myth. It's a myth, it's a myth. It's a myth yeah. and knock. You do not have to tell someone... If you are a member of the City Watch, you do not have to tell someone that you are a member of the City Watch. No hard feelings. I thought you were yeah no hard feelings no yeah it's fine um sorry about that knife stuff just trying to scare you yeah well yeah it, was, it was definitely a pleasure waking up so yeah i, I guess yeah. this is just a really i mean i'm gonna hold a grudge but i mean that's I'm probably fine. i'm probably not gonna act on it you know, it's one of shut those up sh where... get out of here <laughs> all, 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 all right <laughs> get, them, get out hey. Get out of here! He's not like our friends. Um, right? We're and friends. If we board at the temple, I will seek to check in with them. I think we should go to the 6th precinct and say hi to them. So you're going to check in with the temple, yeah. you said? Uh, like, oh, if, that he, if they, they were to board? send okay. word to them, I'll check in with them regularly, like, maybe like three times a day, just to see has word been sent for me. Fair. So, um, yeah, um, the, uh... Well, that, uh uh, been considered a short rest, sitting there talking with old boy. Not really, no. Okay, cool. Um, but uh, if you want to take a short rest, you can. Uh, by that time, all of the corpses would have been devoured. The um, drunkard has been served more alcohol. But he's unconscious. Um, looks like he's he... Been served more alcohol while he's unconscious? No, no, he, yeah. he, he is unconscious. IV. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. You got an IV going just in pouring it. It's just pouring it. <laughs> the guy who the, the very poor looking gentleman who darted under the uh, the billiards and was crying um, has gotten up and it looks like he has taken all of the money that was on the table and kind of put it and is still still putting it into his pockets looks like he's been counting it um, and uh, his just kind of dirty beard it's kind of like you can see this just big smile underneath kind of like you know uh, broken up teeth and just like a, a, a horrible kind of like, you know, look to his face. But he looks like he's, you know, uh, <laughs> this is a great day. This is a great day. Finally got a win. Yeah, you're pretty sure he soiled himself at some point during the process. But yeah, it looks like he is at least 100, maybe 120 gold pieces richer and uh, putting that to bag. Um, the uh, the uh, piano player has finished devouring corpses. I just haven't deleted them all. <laughs> and she's moved back to the piano and is playing kind of just a light kind of tune. And, uh, yeah. Um, the uh, dancer is still sitting at the um, at the bar. It looks like she's devouring very slowly the food that was put before her. Barkeep has um, started the process of uh, performing a very detailed cle uh, a cl a cleanse of the blade. Uh, it looks like he's pulled out, like, you know, um, all the, the kit all the caboodle to kind of make sure that his blade is perfectly clean and sharp. So can you degradate, like, magic weapons? Like, if you fail? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there's a trait that's on, uh, the, a trait that I'm giving magic items that makes them indestructible, but it's a very rare property. Yeah, I'll, I'll just kind of hang out here and do a little short rest before I go back to the six breaks scene to talk to the moose. And I'd like to, I'd be talking to my, uh, my little reel about how he's duped us. Well, it may not be so much that he... Mm, perhaps he said words that had meanings we did not... We could not have predicted. 
But yes, there seems to be some level of falsity in the statements he made. I cannot help pull truth from him until the mar. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, Copperhead wants to go back upstairs and kind of investigate the area, see if he can find out where they went. Sure. You know. Yeah, it looks like um, everybody upstairs except for the orc um, who uh, has, you know, kind of started eating again. Um, but it's not crying as much, but he's kind of got like the, you know, uh, like redness around the eyes from having cried quite a bit. Um, it looks like they exited out the uh, side door. There's a staircase that leads on, on the outside that leads down to the ground level. On this version of the map, you can see the uh, stairwell there. And if you want to see the up above, that's what you're looking at. So which stairwell then? So the presumption is is they oh. exited out the side of the uh, building. Yep. Like there. Okay. Yeah, and then it looks like they, you know. Uh, oh, this stairwell. I see. Okay, I yeah. see what you mean. It's the one down there. Right. All right. All right. Do I do I like walk? Do I see her number on the table or anything? No, she didn't seem to be interested in you at all. You know. Oh, of course. <laughs> Laying hard to get. <laughs> That's so creepy. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, you spend some time there. Um, if I understand it correct, the plan is to kind of take a long rest, wake the next morning, question uh, Moose more. I mean, we could check out the canals, the sewers. Yeah, maybe we could talk to the sewer guilds. Okay. I've heard Dave, you know, that was something he said that really kind of struck a nerve with me. Okay. Is with there a sewer access point near this building? The canal has one. It's just a ways away, yeah. Um, but I will say this. Um, if you're doing that um, without specific um, uh, information, specific intel, um, it's a fruitless endeavor. So you spend some hours kind of, or some time doing that um, and eventually get tired, um, probably retiring back to your own kind of establishments. Um, the sewer was always a red herring. Um, but yeah, if you wake in the morning and go and speak to uh, Ian um, in his uh, cell, the uh, precinct uh, individuals kind of see you coming and go, Hail, um, the uh, prisoner you brought in last night uh, was bailed out uh, very early this morning by um, an individual, kind of looks through the paperwork, pulls it out, sets the piece of paper down in front of you. What does it say in the name? Um, you can see that it appears that the individual in question is someone named... Jabra Nikta. Sorry. Something like that. No, bear Not with that me. that person. All right. All right. Uh, I was guessing. First name, Fodla. Last name, Sarada. I'll type that out for you. Sounds like a bad person. You would know, everyone here would know, that House Sarada is one of the ten houses. Um, having the last name Sarada means that they are a member of the house family, which is like a core unit. Uh, but each of the houses is not bound only to members of a family. Houses in this uh, city actually function a bit more like guilds or um, businesses. They bring people into their house and they basically take on all of the benefits of the house. Uh, but certain members are actually blood related to uh, those houses. There are, I think, three, maybe four of the houses uh, that no longer have members of the original like uh, family in it. It's been kind of like drawn out to a point where uh, they, they've been replaced, but they still call themselves that house because they still operate in that way. So, oh, man, Berwick. That means she's made. Uh, what? She's in the family. That means she's made. Uh, like a gang. No, just like a guild. But it's like, you know, she's in part of the family. She has, she has power, you know. So what do we do? Uh, 
It just means that uh, this guy has some uh, connections. So we got to be careful. We don't want to get ourselves in trouble with the people who have power. Who do we I gotta punch? <laughs> who do I punch? <laughs> who do I punch? <laughs> Me. No, 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 no. So um, kind of winding it down, um, Seth uh, operationally is frustrated at this and oh, yeah. wants to find, very much wants to find Ian because it's the lead that he has. Um, and as we saw in the evening before when he's set to kind of a purpose and he understands it he goes towards it to the nail I would assume that Berwick would join Seth in that specific endeavor so we can guide him definitely yeah thank you seeing that the <laughs> process has kind of fallen <laughs> apart and there are a decent number of clues here but people are kind of overlooking them would probably focus back on yeah the point where it all happened, where everything went down, and focus mainly on the Crystallis Bar and go back there and track out from that position. Copperhead, understanding that the Red Daggers are there, would probably join Benki in that operation. And... Yeah, yeah, screw those Red Daggers. Last, <laughs> but not least, the Priestess of Aloane would report back to her superiors... Not very long after this endeavor, she would get word from the Mardigan family, and they would be very interested in forming a meet. And that is the prologue session for the What Remains campaign. Look forward to seeing where these characters, which are effectively glorified NPCs, by the way, uh, will be moving forward into the story and yeah. how they may operate and function with your character. Who are you calling an NPC? <laughs> I'm not a yeah. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks. Shut thanks for watching. Sorry about the technical <laughs> difficulties at the beginning. Um, I will make sure that that does not happen again. Updates to OBS seem to change the mic that I have to the mic that doesn't exist, the default non-existent mic that I apparently have. But anyways, thanks for bearing with the technical difficulties. And uh, yeah, see you. Well, well, we'll see you when we see you. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. See you in two.